So as y'all can tell, we're live in person, episode fifty. Oh wow! This is the first time Mo and Donovan have met this weekend. Yeah, yeah facts. Or at facts. least in person, you know. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> Loud dab. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. in sync as, as hell. a golden dab. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's so crazy. we told y'all there's gonna be something special for episode fifty. It's the fact that we're finally doing one in person and not via Zoom. So here we are. And to match that special occasion, we're doing something you guys have asked us for since we started the damn show. For we're doing our all-time list. Not just top 10, not just GOAT debate, full top 30. It's going to be great. It's a good way to cap off our ranking tiers for the season. I'm kind of terrified. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to cook me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking man. forward to it. Episode 50, 313K in. How you feeling? Bro, I, this list, honestly... This list was one of the easiest and the hardest because yeah. I think like once you get down, like when we saw with the shooting guard list, like once you get down like past 20, it's like, yo, like who am I putting on this list? Like these yeah. are some bumps, but like obviously these are the top 30 players of all time. So like, yeah. so like, <laughs> exactly. But like you get to, you get to like 25 and 29 and like those numbers and it's like, oh, I can't believe I'm leaving so-and-so off my list. I can't yeah. believe this person's down on my list. And it's just like. Yeah. I'm very excited <laughs> to get into this bag because I want to see where y'all put everybody. Yeah, Damn. Well, when we did the power forward list for number like 30 on the list, yeah. I was like, Kenyon Martin Jr., Zach Collins. <laughs> so it's refreshing as hell to be debating like Allen Iverson versus Kawhi Leonard and shit yeah. like that. Yeah. We're, we're not in hell anymore, I'll say that. Never. We Never. made it out the hood, out the rankings hood. <laughs> but yeah, man, three minutes oh, into I'm the show. Excited. Let's jump straight into these rankings. Let's go. Let's do it. I guess, as always, I, I can start. Me. Pull up this Lord, list. You first, me yeah, second, where are we doing? Donovan third. Yeah, we'll go around the room. There's, I did so many like last minute alterations to this list, yeah. and like, I I want to see what what's your definitive thirty through twenty five. Yeah. Four say actually because we're standing on this. We're standing on these top thirty. Yeah, you gonna hold us to it for the rest of time until we do another one of these lists next year. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you have one year to hold us accountable to this. It's the best way to know if you know ball. But you. in this moment. This is how I feel. <laughs> Before I name this bottom five, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, drop a like, subscribe. If you're on audio platforms, rate five stars, leave us a review, do all that. Help us get those downloads up. Help us impress these sponsors. And yeah, man, follow <laughs> us Follow us on all of our personals. You see the Twitter's on the screen right now. If I remember to put it in, follow us on Twitter <laughs> at the Deep 3 pod on Instagram, all that. Please get me out the hood. <laughs> He's in the trenches for real. Like y'all, y'all, Fact, y'all don't know. I got him out here right now in sunny Los Angeles for the first time. We're recording in my apartment. He's like, I've never seen the sun before in the Bronx. <laughs> we get rain 365 days a year. I don't know trees. I know rats. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. we're helping him day by day. But get, get him out here for real. Let's do it, y'all. <laughs> Who's your top thirty? Let's let's go. All right, my bottom five at number thirty. I have Scotty Pippen. Okay, Mister Six Rings. It's a good range. Twenty nine. Chris Paul, 28, Kawhi Leonard, 27, James Harden. Got some of the young guys in there right now. 26, Charles Barkley. Okay. Oh, that's wow. five. Yeah. That's five. Okay. Yeah. That, this, this was the hardest one for me to rank because it ended up being, like, like I said, a lot of the younger guys who were like still in their careers, but have mm-hmm. clearly broke into the top 30. Yeah. And I left off John Stockton, Steve Nash, Allen Iverson, uh, no Patrick AI. Ewing. Yeah. So like there were some hard cuts. To Ooh. get P- CP3 and Pippen in, yeah. But do, do y'all agree with those? Who's your? It depends. Who's your first cut? Who's that thirty-one? Allen Iverson. I felt really bad about leaving him off my list. He's the best. Player no, you ever. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you're an Allen Iverson hater. Uh, you're you're, you're one. You're one of those people who are like, listen, he's a he's an inefficient shot chucker. <laughs> no, he's no, just no, a no. product of the two thousands. It's probably Allen Iverson. Him or Steve Nash. Okay. Man, yeah. Patrick Ewing's a tough cut, but. It's one of those three. I guess I'll say AI, but Steve Nash had really was on the tip of my mm-hmm. tongue too. I'm trying to. I'm I don't trying know to think why, about this. but for some reason I want to say I don't know if CP3 is top thirty. Is he not? Is he's what? Is he not on your list? He, it, no, he's it's fair. Like it's not crazy. A cut. He's a he got, he got cut from my list. Oh, he got it's cut. definitely not crazy to say okay. just because okay. the playoff success isn't there. Yeah, but, and I'm thinking about like yeah the playoff success and a, a lot of that has to do with like luck entirely situational all this stuff and cp3 generally has some of the worst luck exactly. i've seen in nba history arguably top three worst you know and it sucks because this is like a non-basketball thing when it comes to just straight up hoops and what you can do on the court and how you elevate your team on every single level he's top 30 but i'm thinking of best of all time greatest of all time those things have to be factored into these type of conversations 
And because of how treacherous and how much turmoil tends to happen towards mm. the start of spring, start start of summer, like I'm sorry, but he just couldn't make my list. But you know, I respect it. I like. To I see ended him up get uh, his love. the deciding factor, which a lot of the deciding factor for these lists was defense, because mm-hmm. a lot of these stars put up offensive production, carry a load. CP3 is obviously one of the best playmakers of all time, a really high level scorer as a young guy. The difference was he's a nine time All Defensive Player as a six foot two point guard. That's that absurd. So like, I didn't give him the nut, nut over like Steve Nash, who is, isn't that level defender. That matters to me a lot. How hard was ranking Kawhi for you? Because that I found when I was making my list, that was one of the ones where it's like, yeah, it really, really was tough trying to figure out where where to put him on the list. Yeah, I mean, it should be hard. I kind of like decided a long time ago that I'm gonna give Kawhi credit credit in like legacy debates because like. He's unlucky, obviously, dealt with degenerative injuries that have, like, really shortened his prime and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I decided a while ago that his prime is so incredible and that he did so much in such a small amount of time. All, all three years of it? Exactly. <laughs> Literally. But, like, <laughs> the years. fact that he has five all-star seasons where you stay healthy, but in two of those, or not actually one wasn't in that front, in that window, but twice he's been a finals MVP and been able to accomplish that much, that, that matters to me. Like, that's almost... Some people knock it against him for having a short prime, but I'm like... He only had so many bites at the apple, and he still accomplished stuff at the highest level. Exactly. With a shorter window, I, I, I give him credit. At least be top 30. Yeah. I think I had him higher on my list just because when he was in his peak, in his prime, bro, like, you know, 2019 season, the clutch shots, all that. And on top of that, going back to when he was on the Spurs, uh, being so key and pivotal to – guarding LeBron and all and all that through those years like it's yeah. he easily has to be I think I like the range I understand why he's not higher I I me personally I would have him higher than Barkley just because like Barkley is Barkley and he didn't win anything and you know because of other things that were <laughs> control, controllable yeah you know he kind of derailed himself but at the end of the day like you know I like it I like it I really can't argue because these are the three greatest players of all time and yeah. so I have, I don't imagine myself having gripes unless we're in like the top ten to fifteen range. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I ended up going like Barkley over like Harden and Kawhi just for I, he deserves credit for longevity. Like they don't have that yet, partially because their careers are still going on. But it was like when you compare the resumes, and it's obviously Kawhi has the ring, Barkley has an MVP, which matters. That's a yeah. that's also an accomplishment yeah. that I weigh like almost to the same level as a ring. Really, so, an an MVP is the same in your head as like a ring. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. You're like it's exactly equivalent. Yeah, I haven't yeah, thought about that. Yeah. But in terms of like notches on a belt, when you're doing like tiebreakers, mm-hmm. yeah, like or like one piece, somebody has three three MVPs and everything else is equal. I'm like, okay, yeah. he was deemed the best player in the world three times. Like yeah. Yeah. that matters. Okay. And like throughout the list, a lot of times I kind of gave credit to people who at one point could be argued as the best player alive. Mm-hmm. That means a lot to me. Yeah. I'm happy you just said that. That means a lot to me. That is going to be the theme of this episode because when it comes to talking about the greatest players, the best players of all time, everyone, this list is subjective as hell. And it just depends on what you value at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, there still can be some egregious things. When it comes to my list, you might see some egregious things. Just know it is is what it is and it's what I value. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, there's already already some cuts that, like some stuff that I see on, on Isaac's list. Where I have some cuts. I already know. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I've made some stuff. Yeah. So there's already a whole bunch of names that like I'm leaving off on my list. So I want to get to my like first five on mm. here. So at 30, we got Elgin Baylor. Wow. At 29, we have Patrick Ewing. 28, we have CP3. 27, James Harden. 26, Charles Barkley. Ooh. The two that I left off, and I'll just say it right now, I don't have Scottie Pippen on my list. Okay. Wow. And I don't have Kawhi Leonard on my list. Ooh. Well, why don't you have Scotty Pimpin on your list? I think for Scotty, like the defense obviously is amazing and he's one of the best swing defenders we've ever seen. I think that with a lot of these other guys, they had the opportunity for either half a decade or a majority of a decade to be the driving point of a team and to have a team built around them. And for Scotty, we only saw that for like a year and a half. Yeah. And they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. But that season ends with the last shot of him refusing to go out onto the court because he <laughs> wanted to be the one to take the shot and he's not like this team player. And it's, it's like it, it really That's like true. spoils that entire season for him. Mm. And so it's like I look at Scotty and it's just I, I just don't see the offensive production that a lot of these other guys have. And then for Kawhi, you talk about, oh, like we have to give Kawhi credit. 
I'll give him credit. And again, he's one of my first cuts on this list. He, to me, he's one of the biggest what ifs in NBA history because because he just hasn't stayed healthy. But it's not a what if. He led a team to the championship and he, it happened. Like he did it. Like he did what you want him to do if he had the full length of a career. One like, time. No, everybody else on this everybody else on this list has done it for like a decade. Yeah. And Kawhi, even the first finals MVP, like Listen, shout out to you. I'm not using the yeah, first one. Idea. I'm not yeah, using yeah, yeah. The, the first one because it's like sure. you, you played on a team with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker in that system. You still weren't Kawhi Leonard. And there's been like three to four years where Kawhi Leonard has, has actually been peak Kawhi Leonard of like this insane two way guy. And every other year he gets hurt in the playoffs and we just can't you just you can't rely yeah. on him. But someone like CP3 and Harden are on there. And you, they've done and they've yeah, done it for a decade. They did it for longer. But they didn't do the end goal during that time, and Kawhi did that in a shorter window. He's still, yeah. If you're saying he's the biggest what if, it's because you typically when you say that, it's like, oh, if he could have played for a decade and been his prime, he could have led his team to a championship. He could have did so and so. He still did that, like just because he didn't have the padding, but like he still accomplished the end goal. You'd want him somebody that's a what if to accomplish. I want to see Kawhi, and like again, I'm like 95 percent sure he would have done it. Yeah, right. But I just can't do it whenever we're talking about top 30, and like James. You talk about like tiebreakers. James Harden won an MVP. Chris Paul, again, has been like the epitome of consistency everywhere he goes. He wins. He takes sure. his, he takes this Oklahoma City team that was supposed to be tanking and gets yes. them into the playoffs. And but I, who's going to remember that moment and how consistent he was mm-hmm. compared to the run that that Kawhi Leonard run went on? It's I, again, it's fair, but like. However good that you think that Kawhi Leonard is defensively, Chris Paul like doubles him up on defensive on defensive first teams. Like he like Chris Paul is not a slouch defensively either. That's and true. so if like on a power ranking type thing, CP3 has absolutely everything except for the ring. And that's the one thing that Kawhi has, but he doesn't have really everything else. Yeah. So I'm not but- he again, he's one of my first cuts. I would take Elgin Baylor because I think that Elgin Baylor is like a bucket and <laughs> <laughs> Alger Baylor, a bucket. <laughs> okay. Nice. Those plumbers couldn't stop him. Yeah. They they could they couldn't figure it out. I thought and, you had, you have him low. I have him a little higher. Like he's on my list. I ha- I think I have him higher too. It's I might have him a little bit it's too. It's hard to put him higher because when you play in that era where we're talking about like plumbers and firefighters and stuff like that, and you like <laughs> like you have one ring and there's other guys who we'll see later on this list who have more rings for who, sure who have like more stats than than he does so like i'll give him the respect but the league was so young at that point it's yeah. just really really hard that's why yeah, i don't have him too much higher yeah. because stuff like that like you know bill russell jerry west the guys yeah. that were like the best of the best bill russell won all the rings yeah. jerry west was the best player in the league for like 10 years mm-hmm. wow. i have them really high elgin yeah. baylor's like on the list but not quite as high for that reason like yeah. you give him the nod for being a 12-time all-star or whatever but he's not gonna be like top 10 or anything yeah so exactly. i get it exactly wow. Yeah. yeah, do do y'all feel any type of way about Patrick Ewing being on there? Is he? No, I'm, I'm he's assuming. on my list. Yeah. Okay. He's on my list for okay. sure. That's no, fair for sure. It was just I I gave I, I guess I said he was one of the first cuts. Looking back, I I could have put him or Allen Iverson over Pippen. I kind of just gave Pippen credit for knowing that if he played his whole career as a one option, he could have done like every year All Star type shit mm-hmm. too and like been a one option. Yeah. We all know he's that level of playmaker, that level of finisher at the rim, one of the best perimeter defenders ever. I just didn't hold it against him that he played with Michael Jordan, like that yeah. he got held back statistically by that. Yeah. And kind of gave him credit for what we all know he could scale to if he had the opportunity. Yeah. And just okay. like being the best second option of all time and enabling that run to happen. Like he obviously wasn't as important as Michael Jordan. No mm-hmm. one is. But as far as second options go, he was like as essential as any ever. Okay. Man. Okay. I'm cool with that. Like the Let's... best second option ever versus like the 40th best one, number one option. I guess I'll give Pippen the credit when you know he could be that t- number one option too if he had to. Okay. Yeah, I like that logic. Let's go ahead and roll into my next five or to my first five. Yeah. Let's who, see these? Who, yeah, who you got All at right. 30? So at 30, I have Scotty Pimpin. Okay. At 29, I got Patrick Ewing. Okay. 28. I'm so, so sick to see that Russell Westbrook didn't make either of you guys' list or at not, least. Yeah, not nah, that. Nah. Yeah. Uh, 27, I got Isaiah Thomas. And 26, I have James Harden. I have thoughts. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I have, it's it's I have mainly thought. Westbrook. No, it's not even Westbrook. It's Isaiah Thomas. I wow. think you're being incredibly disrespectful to Isaiah Thomas Should right now. Should be mad at me Should too? Be, There's, be, <laughs> not going to like me either. <laughs> How is Isaiah Thomas at 27? 
How is he only a step up from let Russell me, Westbrook? Let me and all the people know why he should be higher. Why do you feel that way? Isaiah Thomas is... Pull up the stats. I, listen, <laughs> I, Isaiah Thomas and the Bad Boy Pistons as a whole are one of the most underrated like teams in NBA history. And for Isaiah Thomas, to who averaged basically like 19 and 10 his entire career, is... How many, What's up? how many times do you think Isaiah Thomas broke 10 assists per game? How many times do you think he averaged 20 and 10? I am going to guess four. Yeah, it's exactly four. You probably knew that because you looked earlier. That's why I kept him down a little bit is that his peak, really great. 21 and 14 one year. But some of the guys above him just had more years of like top tier production and output that, not to say numbers are everything, like not you don't have to be a 30 point per game score like I have CP3 on there. Mm-hmm. But there's some guys above him who had either just as much success when it comes to rings and leading a team while having just more of a burden offensively that he carried. Isaiah was a good defender, but we're not going to act like he was like locked down like no, he wasn't Gary no, Payton. No. So I just think that some guys carried more of a burden and carried the offense more while also having comparable success offense uh, as a team. Being being able to to average where he averaged for his career and then also being the leader of this team. down and show people the stats? And then, and then also being able to, like, to lead the, his team the way that he did... And here, here's why the Pistons are so underrated. When we get to the top of, of our list, there's going to be guys like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and Michael Jordan and, and, those, and those guys. Boys. And Isaiah Thomas is the only person, right, who yeah. beat all of them. He beat he beat Jordan down. He beat Magic in the finals. He beat Bird to get to the finals. He did all the winning and nobody else, like when, when you talk about like NBA All-75, right, th- like who had the best teammates, Isaiah Thomas didn't have anybody True. on the NBA 75. And not to say, obviously, like Joe Dumars is a scrub or anything, but you look at the Hall of Fame talent that everybody else has, and Jordan has Pippen, and Magic has Kareem and James Worthy, and Bird has Mikhail, and Isaiah didn't have that. And he's able to win back-to-back titles against all of them. And it's like, how how is he so low? And compared to somebody like CP3, who's at like 28 for me, 29 for Isaiah at, at the back half, and he has the rings. Yeah. He has the production against the top competition that we've ever seen in the league. Well, wow. uh, did you leave, did you put CP3 on your list? No, I told you earlier. So we, I him off. we both have him higher. So we both have Isaiah Thomas higher because I think Isaiah Thomas is, like you said, comparable to CP3, except he won, so he's higher. He's much higher. I think I he's he's much higher for me. Well, he lie. doesn't have him on his list, so clearly he's good. My he's, he's like 31, 32. He's he he's matter. much he's much higher on my list. I think that Isaiah is. That whole that whole team they for they really are disrespected yeah. I think because okay. every because everybody just says like oh they just fouled their way to a championship and I mean not really like mm-hmm. they they play they played defense better than everybody else yeah. and they were able to stifle some of the greatest offensive talents we've ever seen and he just doesn't get credit for it and it it sucks you're speaking true gospel right now Donovan and you might have moved me. No, no, this way. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's no. wait until we get more. No, I, moved I, moved him. Him. I moved him. We'll come back to this. Him. Hold on. We'll come back to this because let's see after we get the next five, we'll see who's above him and go back to Isaiah Thomas and have the debate one on one. Because that, that's what's more important is we got to see who Mo has as the five above him so we can go one by one and see why Isaiah Thomas deserves to be above him. Let's go. My next five 25 Isaiah Thomas. Still nice. low. Not much higher. 24 Dirk, who I feel like is my most controversial placing on this list. I think I'd have him lower than most people would. You don't respect 2011. Not as much as everybody else does, I guess, because I don't think crazy. it makes him God. I mean, I think it's a great accomplishment. That's why he's, you know, up there. That's why he's not James Harden. You know, if he didn't win that ring, he'd be James Harden. He'd be the same player, basically. But he's 24. Elgin Baylor, 23. 22 Wade. 21 David Robinson. Wow. Well, I wanted to put a little bit higher, yeah. but I, I spent like a good amount of time nitpicking back and forth. Mm-hmm. David Robinson versus other comparable bigs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like David Robinson versus like Jokic was hard for me. Obviously, Jokic is higher. Spoiler alert, I don't know if some people thought I left him off the list. I fucking didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But yeah. Uh, which we'll, we'll, go, we'll obviously we'll go back to Isaiah Thomas once we see Moe's next yeah. five. What else do y'all have issue with? Uh, I don't see. I like what you're, where, where you're headed right now. I think you're cooking. You're, you're cooking yeah. something because I'm kind of around the same like area. The only thing is just funny is how wildly different we might have Elgin Baylor. Yeah, thirty to twenty four is. Hilarious. He's so hard to rank. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's hard to rank people who started their career in nineteen fifty eight. It's crazy year. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to how to. Who was the president in nineteen fifty eight? Come on, listen, <laughs> listen. Lyndon I did B. not Johnson? pass my. Know, he'll pull that up. Who was the president in nineteen fifty eight? I didn't pass my A push test. I don't know. 
president in 1958. Dwight Eisenhower. Eisenhower. <laughs> yeah, bro. Elgin Baylor was hooping when Dwight Eisenhower was in office. What year was Elgin Baylor born in? Can you Google that? Shit. That has to be third, 1930 something. <laughs> 1934. That's, he a, was that's a bad picture of him. As well. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's crazy. They really disrespected him. Was Elgin Baylor really born during World War One? Yeah, <laughs> or was that the 20s? I don't know. That was before. That was like seven years before. Yeah, I got an American education. I can't remember. <laughs> he was born before Hitler invaded Poland. That's crazy. And we're trying to talk about how good he can hoop. Yeah. I, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. He was great. It's easier when you have someone like Bill Russell or Jerry West, whoever, yeah. have like so many accomplishments that yeah. like you can just say they dominate the era. Best player of the era is that's easy to say. Like yeah. all you can do is play in your era. Yeah. Someone like Elgin who great career, but essentially just accumulated stats for a decade, which is impressive. But it's hard to give him that credit you give to other guys when Facts. he played 50 years before the competition is what it is today. Facts. No, I, I agree. I agree. Elgin, man. Yeah, no, you're you're you're, cook, you're cooking with something. Obviously, I don't like your Isaiah Thomas placement. You I think Dirk it. is a little bit too low. Um, but well, what about the names above him? Which would, would you put him above the three above him? Yeah, I would. Okay, tell I me would. what. Well, actually, 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 no. Maybe, Go ahead. Maybe, maybe, maybe there. I'm being, I'm being for. Real. I forget my placement of stuff. Yeah. But twenty, it's really just the placement of Dirk at twenty four. Yeah, and so like mm. once we get lower, there's probably some mismatching that we have to do. Yeah. But I just like, he just feels like he should be higher. Should he be above D Wade? I uh, should first. Dirk? What do you think? Yeah. Should he be no, above Wade? No, D Wade. I like where D Wade's at. He I should agree. not. No, there's no way. You can't wrap that. I, I understand. I, I think you're putting a little bit too much weight on that singular 2011 year. I Everyone understand. does. He went through who? Kobe, he went to, he OKC, went to, all them boys. Like, it's deep. He beats Brandon Roy in the first round. Sweeps Kobe and the defending champion Lakers. Beats the Thunder in like five games. Yeah. And then six games comes back down 2 1 against the Heat. <laughs> Great accomplishment. I respect him very much. It's one of the greatest runs. Oh, it's one sure. of the greatest finals runs. And it's probably top three. It's all probably time. top one or two. Like it's this or coming back down 3 1, LeBron, like in 2016. Like it's it's up there. I just don't think in the same way one year of like failure doesn't like ruin somebody's legacy. I'm not gonna let one year of peak be like make me blind to the fact that David Robinson is an all-world defender and Dirk is average at best at his peak. Like, a whole side of the ball, someone like David Robinson is dominant when Dirk is ineffective. So, like, the accomplishments is one thing, but who they are as a player, some, there's a lot of people above him that are comparable offensive players, but impactful defensive players. I think Dirk's peak offensively gets a little bit underrated, but also the fact that he is able to be, like, the first, like, stretch forward that you can actually run an offense around and really kind of change how yeah. people view, like, offense. And to be fair, like, view European players. Yeah, that is true. Dirk is the reason why a lot of that's changing because, yeah. he, because he's able to go. And also, Dirk, Dirk had the very misfortune of being on a team owned by Mark Cuban because Mark Cuban didn't do anything for him. Yeah. He, he, is, he was he was hooping. He doesn't get talked about enough, man. Bro. He doesn't catch any, enough strays. Listen, people think that just because he's on Shark Tank, he's this like amazing <laughs> business mind. That's not the case. He had him hooping next to like an aging Michael Finley, Josh Howard, and <laughs> old Jason Kidd, right? Like he wins that ring with Deshaun Stevenson, Jason Terry, and JJ Barea being, <laughs> being his point hell. And 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 Tyson Chandler as well, but it's not a great cast. He's not playing with all stars every year. No, he's yeah. mid. We just did a, we just did an exactly. NBA championship tier list, and we all give them D because the team is mid. Exactly, which makes Dirk's accomplishment even better. I agree. It's just like look at the names above him: D Wade, more rings. If you're doing the whole ring thing, granted he had LeBron, so it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I think his peak was better as well. Yeah, he's overall just, he was, just better build archetype of a player, more effective on the court in every single situation imaginable. So. I just lean towards Wade. That was dramatic, I think, but I agree. Wow. I agree. He's better. He's just as good an offensive player and for his position, more impactful defensively, I think. Would yeah. you say that? Yeah. Can, and like can, Robinson, we, can, I think we, Robinson can we get the next five? Can we get my next five real quick? Because I I need to remember where I put Wade in this conversation. Oh, wow. And so, but first, in 25, I have Carl Malone. 24, David Robinson. You're a sicko. 23, Dwayne Wade. 22, I have Jokic. 21, I have Giannis. Let it be known, I did not rank that man on my list. I Who? let them off. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Nasty oh, Man yeah, is not sure. on my list. Listen, yeah, we I don't name him over I here. I understand. We don't say his name. I understand Voldemort. that we have done our best, right, to erase the Nasty Man from history. However, he's like the third leading scorer in NBA history. Like, he got buckets for a minute. Like, I I got to put him 
I gotta put him there. He's eleven time All NBA. Like it's yeah. it, it's kind it's kind of there. But that's that's my next five, and I have Wade at, at twenty three. I think me and you should vote right now to overrule <laughs> him and remove Carmelo from his list and put Kawhi Leonard at thirty. Should we just like destroy his list for him? I like the way you're thinking. Let's. What is this? <laughs> Carmelo's off his list. Kawhi Leonard is thirty. We're never shoot, we're never shooting in person again. I, 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 I'm not rocking with this. I'm just kidding. What? I'm just kidding. Uh, he, anyway. can leave, he can leave Mr. Thirteen on his list if he likes. He likes it. <laughs> Mr. Thirteen. So, discuss the 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 next the next five. Yeah, Where so are your gripes? David Robinson's too low. Wow. Why? Because he is underrated offensively. His ability, he's kind of like the early version of Giannis. It was like this fast guy who can run the floor, can run the break with a ball handler better than you think. Defense is immaculate. A top tier defensive player, two way impact. Like he's like Giannis, but he's more accomplished. He has the MVP, he has multiple rings. He did it for a longer amount of time. Giannis will watch out. I'd Giannis higher than him, so never mind. I'm going to say that. <laughs> but he's a similar mold. I don't have him too much higher. And like, well, I guess I don't have. Can. Okay, I wonder who you have above him actually, because now I'm thinking about it. I have Robinson higher than you, but I also have Giannis and Jokic a lot higher, so it's hard for me to say. Like, you clearly have people above all of them that mm-hmm. I have below. So, here's okay. Here's my thing on, on Robinson. Great, he has all the rings, right? Two way player. He didn't. He didn't do any of that winning before Tim Duncan showed up. That is. He very didn't. True. He didn't. He didn't do. He didn't do any of we it. We can play that game with a lot of people. He didn't know, but he didn't do it. Be- all three of his rings come in a five year span after Tim Duncan shows up. He's great. He gets he gets the MVP though, gets busted by Hakeem. Hakeem is eating him alive. And 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 we will see this later with, with Hakeem. But like Robinson has some stuff where it's like when you were the guy, you guys weren't making runs like that. Wade, I'm giving Wade credit for the couple of rings. The reason why I would put him below Dirk, below Jokic, below Giannis. Yeah. That listen, 06 matters a lot it really it really really does but he was getting bounced out in the first round every year before from 07 to 2011 he was getting bounced out by joe johnson and the hawks by by paul pierce and the and the celtics like there's some there's a stretch in wade's career where it just wasn't great would you like to hear the team dave robinson played with before they got tim duncan in 1994 the year he averaged 30 tell me Shooting guard, Willie Anderson. Who? I don't know. Corey Crowder. Who? Terry Cummings. Fire. Vinny Del... <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Vinny Del Negro. That's the name I know. He's Howard smart. Isley. Sean Elliott. Okay, finally good Sean player. Sean Elliott, nice. Jack Haley. Mm-hmm. Avery Johnson. Nice. A player nice. I've heard of, mostly because nice. TV. <laughs> yeah. The Corpse of Moses Malone. Julius Nwosu, which sounds like a football player name. <laughs> Chuck Person. J.R. Reed. The Corpse of Doc Rivers. Actually, no, he wasn't yet old, but Doc Rivers, like not in his prime. Dennis Rodman, who's a problem child, bouncing around the league before the Bulls saved his career, and Chris Whitney. You just talked about how Dirk had the ownership that gave him nobody around him, and he finally got a team he could win. And you, then you penalized David Robinson for only winning when his team was good? No shit, he didn't win with fucking Dennis Rodman <laughs> out here in the streets being crazy. Let me let me tell you something. The What year was that? 1994. Do you know who won the championship that year? That was the That was the, that first, was that that was was the, the first Rockets team. A and better go, team. <laughs> go look at that team. It's Hakeem rocking with Kenny Smith and he was good. Otis, well, you know what? Kenny Smith and Otis Thorpe. Hakeem Olajuwon, if we're talking about anybody facing mismanagement for an extended <laughs> period of time, it's Hakeem well, Olajuwon. You know, and he gets two rings that's great. while David Robinson is getting. And that's why I'm giving yeah. Hakeem credit. And guess what? He's 10 spots higher. For reason. Like David Robinson. Hakeem's 10 spots higher than David Robinson. 10. Wow. You're, you're being disrespectful already. Ooh. What do you mean? I have, I have a key. He's playing. I have Dave Robinson at twenty one. No, no, no. This is this is that was that's a ninety five one, right? Where they where they get Clyde, but the year the year prior, click the previous season right there. Yeah, the year the year prior, it's Hakeem and Scott Brooks, Matt Bullard, Sam Cassell, Mario Ellie, Robert Ory, Vernon Maxwell, Otis Thorpe. <laughs> that's why he's pushing top ten, and Dave Robinson isn't. I agree. Hakeem's much better. That's not the point. I understand that, but I'm saying don't act like it's not possible. If that's why he's top, that basically top ten, and Dave Robinson not. And I'm saying Robinson wasn't able to get the job done with the with those casts, and we've seen guys who are going to be much higher on this list. Would Dirk get, have won that team? Psh, he no. did it in 2011. No. That team was way better. No, no. He did it. Hell no. He did it. He, so got, it. he got the job done. 
Dirk got the job done. That's why he's higher. That Hakeem Hakeem got the job done. That's why he's a lot higher. And we will see this moving forward. But yes, I think that David Robinson out of the how many Hall of Famers are on the Hakeem team compared none. to. And compared to and how many Hall of are on Dirks? None. If you compare no, that, no, no, no. well, actually, no. Jason, he, no, he had Jason Kidd. Kid. He had Jason Kidd. A washed, a washed Jason Kidd. Still a very effective, but yeah, not yeah. as not as prime. But it's whatever. Uh, do not act like the 2011 Mavericks aren't yeah. leagues better than the 1994 Spurs. That's hilarious. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that, and this is why I'm giving Dirk credit, but for Robinson and specifically for him, there's a very big period of his career where. He is not getting the the job done amongst the other great centers in the league. In a league where if you have one great center, even if you look at like the 94 Knicks and like John Starks is their be- is their second best player, you see a lot of other examples in the league. They didn't win. You see they they get they get to finals and stuff like that. But I'm saying you get to you get to see a lot of other players with terrible teams around them do more. And go further than what Robinson was, and so that's why I have him below Wade, below Jokic, and below Giannis. Okay, I mean, again, I have him below them as well. Besides Wade, I'm just the names above him. I don't know who they are. Okay, Isaiah Thomas, you have obviously a higher. You don't. We'll see. We'll we'll go back to him like we're going back to it, and then we'll debate individually because he's somebody I feel strongly about in the same way you do about it. Robinson. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I wonder where you do have Dirk at, man. That's me too. Right? Yeah, I'm so curious how much higher you have him. Let's see, let's see most next five. <laughs> All right. So at five, 25, I have Dirk. 24, that's Kawhi. That's Ooh. high. That's high. That is high. But, man, what he was able to do in such a I short span. It. He got... It, the, the, we, the we just giving people credit for not playing games? Huh? We giving people credit for not playing games? So a lot of times that he didn't play games. It's not, it's not his fault. He won so, a lot of them, motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. 24, Kawhi. 23, Charles Barkley. 22, Eldon Boehner. Baylor, respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> 20, 20, I love it just to respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> and then 21, I got David Robinson. Perfect placement. Is it? Perfect placement. Same place I got him. I'm uh, three man. spots below y'all. David Robinson. He's literally in the same tier. And you guys are out here trying to crucify me. No. No. It is three spots. <laughs> This is ridiculous. You guys didn't you guys are nitpicking for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> These videos are all nitpicking. <laughs> oh man. No. But no, I, I, yeah, it is just three spots. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, the thing is I was thinking I could put Robinson higher and I was being yeah. conservative. So to have him like even lower than this, I feel like twenty one's his floor. I just know that I have Jokic higher than Robinson. Me too. And so that's why I was like, wherever Jokic is, mm. Robinson has to go after him. I agree. Because Jokic Jokic is better. And that's the that's the thing that I'll stand on. If we want to move him up, move him up. Air, uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, newsflash. Jokic is like that. Jokic is like that. Better than all your faves. Sorry. Wow. And so yeah. So I have to. This is more about respect for for Jokic than disrespect for David Robinson. Okay. Man, I just realized I left someone off my list. Don't know how I did it. Who is it? But the logo. Oh, you love Jerry West. The logo. I don't remember putting hey, his name on listen, my list at just all. Tell him. Respect. It's different though. It's the literal the literal logo, man. Man, that's marketing someone propaganda. Was, you're yeah. fine. Someone was one of the best players, though the best player for a very long time. I agree. Okay. I have him on so, my list. Stuff. He's on my list. Good. Alright, All right. what's what's next? We're moving my next through five. This. One more. I have Moses Malone at twenty. Okay. Nicole Jokic at nineteen. Wow. Giannis at eighteen. Kevin Garnett at seventeen. And Julius Irvin at 16. I love the I like, Julius Irvin placement, bro. I like this pairing. This is your best. This Out of all the rankings we've done, this is the best five-player span that yeah. you've had. Yeah, wow. This, this is, just seems perfect for everybody. Yeah. Okay. I think Moses okay. Malone is very underrated in these talks. When you just, like, I don't think most people realize he's a three-time MVP and, like, yeah. just how truly dominant of an offensive yeah. force he is. It's like fucking hard to do. He's very similar to Shaq in the way he plays and the way he's just, yeah. like, physically dominant over everybody. He's and strong just, with everybody. Just can't be fucked with. Yeah. Like, when you're comparing him to like who do I have like Dirk, a lot of people would have Dirk above Moses Malone. Mm-hmm. I think Moses is probably a better, if not equal, offensive player. He actually has defensive strengths. He's not the best defender in the world. I think most of it was a motor issue. People mm-hmm. say about Malone, but you know, compared to Dirk, he's fucking all world defensively. Yeah, three MVPs, won the ring, twelve All Stars, which is a lot of times you see that's kind of the number you see with a lot of these guys, mm-hmm. the baseline, which means prolonged success over a decade. You could put you can if you put him over Jokic and Giannis because they just need more time to accumulate stuff. Sure. I'd understand. Mm-hmm. I just okay. for those two specifically, I'll touch on that because I have them higher than you, and a lot of people are going to have issues with that because they're so young. 
Jokic is only at four years of prime. Wait, just, do you have him higher than me? Jokic? Jokic. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought you were talking about Moses. My bad. No, no, no. Okay. Like Jokic and Giannis, I have him higher. I'm just not going to hold them back because time, because they're still going. Uh, sure, injuries can happen. Maybe their prime gets cut short. If that happens, I'll take it to the chest. They should be lower, I guess. But I'm going to assume they keep doing their thing and have the long careers that you'd expect them to have. Mm-hmm. Relax. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I'm just gonna assume they keep doing their thing, even if they don't make any more notable MVPs, rings, or anything. Just get to a regular ten years of prime. That's where they'll be at least. Gotcha, gotcha. My okay. question lies within that whole. I'm not even looking at Jokic because I like it. Whatever, cool. I'm more so looking at the Giannis versus KG. That's, That's a tough. constant back and That's forth hard. that I seem to feel like no one really has a grasp on who exactly is better. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say I have a very similar ranking to where you guys have them at. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, there's so much things, there's so much to factor because these two played at a very different era. And I feel like, me personally, if KG was to play in today's NBA, (laughs) he'll be fucking feasting. The spacing is ridiculous to handle the job. The defense is... I, don't, I feel like he's just literally perfect, Some, somewhat comparable to Giannis. He'd be what we wanted NBA. younger AD to be as exactly. he got older. He exactly. would be like 2018 AD exactly. with the winning system. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I So would you put Giannis above KG? What's, what's your next five? What's your next five? Me? No, I had KG. Okay. I had KG higher, originally, but only one spot higher, I think. Originally, I had so, KG below Jokic, which yeah. means below Giannis. I ended up going to KG just because it's kind of the inverse of what I was just saying about giving Giannis and Jokic credit that they're going to do it. Yeah. It was just like KG had similar accomplishments, but we already know he had prolonged excellence. So yeah. they were so equal. And he like he had the same type of ceiling as those two guys. So I gave him that nod. Yeah. But I Jokic is going to pass them both up. Giannis, we'll see. But I, I'm not mad at going KG behind them. All right. Okay. So here's my next five. Dwayne Wade at 20. Mm. KD is at 19. Oh, shit. He has no back. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I got KD at 19. Hey. I got KD at 19. I have to. I have to. I'm oh, thinking shit. about best I, players I of this. all time. Everything is taken into consideration. I love this. Talent-wise, I would love to have him higher, but wow. the NBA is not only about talent, bro. Oh, shit. It's like if, if the NBA was about talent, bro, there'd be... Fucking Brandon Jennings would be some of the like, bro. Like, I'm sorry, but he can't. He <laughs> can't be that's fucking a Jennings. wild yeah. pool. Brandon that's Jennings is a wild, wild pool. pool. I'm just thinking of some of the most talented, some actually talented <laughs> players who just suffer for other reasons. But Brandon Jennings is <laughs> one of the most talented players. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> context of that consistent was cut off. James Anyways, Harden. Let's go, let's go with that. One. You can say James Harden. Whatever. Cool. KD 19. Other things around basketball was added into this list. Okay. <laughs> Moses Malone 18, I believe. 17, Giannis and 16 kg. I've, I think I have uh, Dr. J in the next set of teams. Please okay. tell me what? why KD doesn't break top 15. <laughs> why KD? Because this sounds like it's about to be generational hate, nah, and I'm, I'm ready for it. Let's move on. No, specifically, yeah. tell us why Kevin Garnett deserves to be above Kevin Durant. Kevin Garnett deserves to be above Kevin. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> Kevin Garnett deserves to be higher than KD. Because of, okay, defense is there generational, yep. and there's like he's one of the five best defenders ever in my head when mm-hmm. I think about him and okay. I watch all the highlights. And, Valid. Like it's just, it's just there. And when it comes to offensively, the consistency, I think, you know, KG's era didn't really necessarily do him that much justice. And KD's KD, it doesn't matter what era you put him in, it is what it is. But more so, it's the outside stuff. When everything is going to hell, how are you going to respond? Are you going to like be in the front office with me and figure out how to work shit out? Or are you going to be on <laughs> Twitter him, being like, damn, look at all this slander and then going back like, oh, I'm sorry. Wait. Like that that stuff matters. Like, when I think of the face of my franchise, I want someone who is a tree stump. Who was ten toes a down? Tree no matter stopper. what, nice. And that's what KG is. That's what Giannis is. I can't imagine K. I can't imagine any of those dudes. Oh, I love this. Going ahead and switching up. They would never hop in Twitter Spaces to defend the <laughs> honor. They would never do it. They would never argue with Low. I mean, I respect it. You know, shout out to Legend of Winning. You know, but like, you don't. <laughs> you're not KD. Like, it's just there's other things around basketball that also. Needs to be factored in t- when it comes to talking about where you rank all time. If I'm, it was all time talented, then it's a different conversation, completely different conversation. I'm so happy you put him there. I wanted to put KD this low. I put him higher just out of respect. 
But that's probably going to be one of the th- one of the first things that I change after we get done. <laughs> because you talk about all the stuff off the court. Yeah. If we talk on the court, there's a lot of stuff that gets washed over with KD and a lot of losing and a, and a lot of moments where he doesn't show up and is not, you know, best player in the world, second best player in the world, doesn't do that. Everyone wants to get on Steph and the Warriors for blowing the 3-1 lead. Rightfully so. Who did it? 10 days before they did. <laughs> Kevin Durant, who was out here shooting 10 for 31? Who's out here with another all NBA player, right? Number one seed winning all these games and can't get to the finals. They get to the conference finals like four times in six years and just can't get back. They just can't get over the hump. And there's just always somebody who finds their way to be better than Kevin Durant, to be better than Kevin Durant's team. And when we talk about leadership and when we talk about all these all these things, the intangibles, being that tree stump, KD, you're right. He's not that. And so I, I'm going I'm to take a page out of your book. And after this, I'm lowering him because I, wow. did, I did put him kind of high. Yeah. I love that. I though. just I love Giannis of KD is so funny. I love it. Like, I, I, I'm not going to be out here defending KD's yeah. honor. So it's fine. Yeah, in my mind, I'm just like, what was it? 2021. If. The Nets do go ahead and win and KD still goes out and leaves or whatever, like that probably does move me. But the fact the truth of the matter is, you know what it it quite literally, he didn't win, he lost, he didn't have Kyrie. Harden was out while we're walking around with one hamstring. It is what it is. Luck is also like a part of this list. Mm-hmm. The luckily the lucky er you are, the more higher you're gonna be on this list is just NBA history. It's human history, bro. Yep. You know, uncontrollable, it's not my fault. He's he's nineteenth on my list. I, I don't love think that. that's terrible. I love that. That's great. I love it. Uh, I'm glad one of us took a stand and did something that you just truly believe. That's beautiful. I probably won a lot of times where my list where I'm like I want to put a guy low, but I was like, everybody else thinks this. He it's deserves that respect. Way. There's probably some people I wanted to hate on. I didn't have the balls to do something like that. I respect <laughs> it. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. It's a dumb next five. All right. Uh, so my next five, I have KG at twenty. Dirk at wow. 19, Moses Malone at 18, Oscar Robertson at 17, and the Wilt Chamberlain at 16. What? Wilt <laughs> Chamberlain? We're talking about hating you. Wilt? Wilt? Just, Listen. You took it to the next level <laughs> just now. Let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's have actual basketball conversation. Let's talk about how Wilt Chamberlain is some stat merchant who runs <laughs> who who runs up and down the, the floor for like four for over 48 minutes a game just getting mad possessions and playing it like it's 2k back, back. and then we get to the playoffs and you, there's only two guys right at his position in the 60s that are that are worth anything and it's <laughs> and, worth, yeah. and it's him and bill russell yeah. and the moment you get into a series with somebody else who is the level of um of player that that you are you get shut down. You can't win any rings. You don't win any rings, right, until you get to Jerry West at the end of your career. Oh, Will, Will Chamberlain, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, he scored. He scored 100 points. He averaged 50 points in, in a season. He averaged 25. Shut up. <laughs> Bill Russell won eight rings on your watch. What are, we, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? <laughs> shut up. What are we talking about? Uh, Listen, all the, all the Wilt stories are like, Cool, and I guess everybody just thinks that it's funny that like some se- that like some seven foot guy is just a mean <laughs> person, right? Everybody, everybody. What's that one story about <laughs> him said, being in yeah, an elevator? Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a story about about him and Kareem in an elevator, and Kareem says that Will Chamberlain, that the guy asked Will Chamberlain, "How's the weather up there?" And then Will Chamberlain spits on the guy and says it's raining. Damn! And, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, ha ha ha! That's so cool! That's so funny! He's so he's so this! He's so that!" You you know what he is? He's a loser because he <laughs> lost to Bill Russell year in and year out, and he was never able to do it. And you get to a situation where the game slows down by ten percent, and now you can't affect the game. I don't I don't I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear. It. Do we even know if the hundred point game is actually real? Are we serious? For real, everything uh, is documented. We have. We have hieroglyphics from ancient <laughs> Egypt, and still nobody knows where the film is. <laughs> Where's the film from that game? Uh, <laughs> this is fucking legendary. People, uh, people know what happened ten billion years ago. They know how the Earth was created. They know what the Egyptians were talking about. What they were saying, even though we, that is like seen aliens. Even though that is six languages removed from what we're talking about right now, and nobody knows outside of. <laughs> 
a sheet of paper with crayon on it that says 100. <laughs> I'm not putting. I'm not putting Will Chamberlain into my top 15. Obviously, wow. the stats are amazing. He's a very good basketball player, and I'm sure he would be very effective in today's NBA. But you put him up against some 6'10 guy, right? And apparently, he just can't do anything. I'm not. I'm not giving him that respect. So yeah, wow. that's why he's that low. Okay. Uh, wow, you treating him like he's DeAndre Jordan? It's not like he's just going against like you know like the most random scratch. Bill Russell, man. He gets exposed every year. <laughs> Bill Russell every exposed year. most people. Yeah. Every year. He's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Okay. Like, I will say, I'm 100% in agreement that a lot of, I'll say young people, to be nice, see Will average 50, scored 100, and they're like, the most greatest player to ever live. Pound for pound, go. But if you, so we can't do this. We can't because they didn't track possessions back then. Yeah. But smarter people, I don't think in basketball has tracked this has mapped his games out to what he would do per 75 possessions, mm-hmm. which is about the average possessions in a game when you're not playing in 1962, running up another court like maniacs, chucking up terrible shots. His He would be averaging like, it would be like 35, 36 points per game, which is still great, but it's not otherworldly. But if you even things out for pace, he's not like a better scorer than the other great scorers of all time. Exactly. He's very great in all time, but not this otherworldly Greek god who t- happens to bless our game. <laughs> so like... <laughs> He's, He's much more normal, much more yeah. normal than you think. Exactly. So I respect it. I, wow. I, I don't want to go. That, I didn't go that low, but like some people were like, "He's top five. He's the most dominant player ever." I didn't have him there. Five. He should That's never crazy. be in a top ten conversation. I put him top ten just because <laughs> you did <laughs> barely, but yeah, because wow. um, I mean, he is still a great defensive player, a great shot blocker, otherworldly athlete, is a great scorer, dominated his era. Bill Russell dominated more, so Bill Russell's higher. But I think there's something to if you are truly the most dominant player in the world for an extended period of time, you should be like, you can't be, if you're, if you were had the argument for being the best player in the world mm-hmm. for a prolonged period or at least a couple of years, you're going to be top 15. Yeah. Listen, he's cool on 2K though. <laughs> like, I'm off threat. <laughs> I, exactly. I play with him on 2K. He helps me win, but like there. But if we're talking like amongst the legitimate all time greats, top 10, he's just not in the upper room, he's not in that inner circle. So, wow. so yeah. You just put me on, Donovan. You just edumacated me just now. <laughs> <laughs> edumacated. That's, funny. I love That's this. hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Duh, our producer, Nikhil, just pulled up some stats. Will Chamberlain's career numbers per, per 75 possessions. Per 75 possessions, 20 points, 15 rebounds, and three assists, which plus 9.9 effective field goal percentage means. Compared to the league average, he's this much better than league average. Which is good. Yeah, like, yeah. Plus 10 if effective field goal percentage of a league average is incredible. One of the best of all time. So that's why I think he's top 10. But only plus 5.5 relative to shooting percentage, which is very normal. Which means he wasn't a good free throw shooter. So he was more efficient than average. But most all-time greats are about plus 5 or plus 6 mm-hmm. relative to shooting percentage. Mm-hmm. Then you look at Jokic below him. More points per game. Less rebounds. Way more assists, obviously. And that true shooting percentage is even better. So that's what I'm saying. When you put in these smarter analytics to compare him to a more even playing field across generations, he's great, but he's normal. Wow, man. Yeah, listen, he's just playing like, he's just playing recess basketball. Dude, they, they ran like 200 possessions a game. It that was is ridiculous. Abs- cardio is crazy, absurd, though. You yeah. got to give him credit for the cardio. Yeah, nowadays not- they might push 100 possessions in a game and pace is really high right now. Yeah. Like yeah. people talk about that a lot in the modern NBA that like, we look at like James Harden scoring numbers and people were like, yeah, no, it's a modern NBA pace and space. It's easier to accumulate numbers. <laughs> go, go back, go back 30 years. Yeah. Go back 40 it might years. It might have been slow in the 90s. Push it back to the 60s when pace these motherfuckers didn't know what they were doing. They the were just, 80s? <laughs> they, were, they were running in the 80s. Yeah, you watch Bob Cousy play? His... This is hilarious. I love this shit, man. I love it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, let's Mo. How about I've been breaking the top the next years. How about you break this list, Mo? Let us know yeah, your fifteen. Let's go ahead and do it. There's one thing that I immediately regret, and it's after Donovan's generational rant. <laughs> I can't believe I think I have Wilt at number ten. Damn. Oh no, I'll flame you. That's okay. Anyway, I got him a little bit higher. Russell's twelve. Yeah, I have Russell twelve. Okay, read, read I don't know, list. but read your I, list of the people. Okay, so let me read my list of the people. Big O. 15. Okay. Shout out to you, man. 14. <laughs> Patrick Ewing. <laughs> 13. Jokic. Wait, that says Ewing? No, it says Irving. Oh, Julius Irving. My bad. Uh, Ewing oh, at 14 wow. would be hilarious. Okay. Oh, wow. Julius Irving at 14. Julie, is he on your list? 
Keep going. Yeah, keep yeah, going, yeah keep no, going. no, no. Keep on. Okay. Julius Irving, 14. 13. Jokic. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Give me that shit. I fucking love it. Don't leave me hanging right now. My hands up. Wow. My fucking hands just up. Relax. He's about to <laughs> hands up. Relax. He's got ten toes on this. He's gonna change it. He's gonna change it. I'm not gonna change it. I'm not gonna change it. But I'm not like you know. He's gonna change it. It's it's flex. He's not twelve. Bottom. Bill Russell. Eleven. Hakeem. Okay. Okay. Digest. Listen, again, I think we can all say Big O. Julius Serving. Check that shit in my veins. <laughs> respect, y'all. Yeah. Listen, respect. You did what you had to do. Right, you got you got a couple rings. Good job. I respect you. Now let's get to this. Jokic at thirteen. I love it. Yeah. Please explain. Jokic I, this at thirteen. Crazy. Jokic this at crazy. thirteen. When I look at that's so high. I know it's. I understand that it's so high, but I, when I look at everyone else above him, there's just certain. There's just I, there's like two. There's three players in NBA history who really warp the fuck out of an NBA offense and are just simply unschemable. There's not a single... I've never seen anyone game plan against Jokic in my entire life. The only game plan that you can hope is Jamal Murray breaks his ACL and MPJ throws an <laughs> attitude fit, bro. Facts. That's it. That's that, wow. that's Facts. how you guard him. Every, everything else around him has to be broken, you know? And there's only a wow. few players around him is, in NBA history crazy. like that, which is LeBron, Curry, Jordan, you know? Wait, guys not, like, not even... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm on your side. I want to. I wish I could put him higher. How many players? I was both of you. This have ever been arguably the best scorer in the NBA. Jokic had the highest true shooting percentage of anybody that averaged 25 last year, <laughs> the last few years really, and also been the best passer in the world. How many players have ever done that? Top three to five score and best passer in the world. Top three to five score doing. You can both just say at top five same each. fucking time is ridiculous. Only player I can think of is fucking LeBron. Me too. And James Harden, if we pretend okay. the playoffs don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the playoffs exist for him. So James Harden's out of those conversations. You could say Curry's a top five playmaker, not necessarily a passer. So maybe you could throw Curry in there, also the, one of the best offensive players ever. I think Jokic is going to finish his career as a top three offensive player ever, potentially. That's that's kind of crazy. That, but he's a top five scorer there's, and a top five passer. Yeah, and there's that's kind of crazy. Quite literally, when everyone's been healthy around him, there hasn't been a single playoff failure, and I don't think there ever will be as long as people around him are straight. And that's one thing. That 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 moved me. That moved me. Top five passer, top five score. Think about that longer. Just like, not even passer, playmaker. Someone that makes everybody around him better. That's Curry what that. makes him unguardable. The playmaking. Okay, cool, whatever. He can he can score like shit. It doesn't matter. Whatever, cool. He can shoot. Okay, whatever. We've seen that before. But the passing, there's you can't guard passing. It's the most. Un, it's quite literally the most unguardable skill ever because there's things around you, and when you can score like he does, you can manipulate any and everything think around about, you. Donovan, too. what is holding you back besides time? Besides, you have to see it longer. I think at 13, and at least when we say he's definitively above Giannis, definitively above KG, those two guys are elite defensively. And specifically with True. with Giannis, I think the I think like you can make the argument just because like KG wasn't that level of a score and this and that, but Giannis has a DPOY, he has a ring, he has a Finals MVP. Like their resumes are very very similar, and Giannis has an impact on both ends of the floor mm -hmm. yes. in a way that that Jokic doesn't. And Giannis obviously he's not like the best passer ever. He's a good playmaker. Yeah, but like he can he can keep things moving at at an above average level and. He's and he's scoring twenty eight a game, yes. right? Very very efficient twenty eight last year. It's I'm, yeah. It just see it seems it seems a bit high to is, be to be I'm that much higher okay. than Jokic. Is Giannis low or is Jokic high? Might be a little bit of both. I, hey, yeah. let's cook. They're both top fifteen. When I can they agree with that. I can agree with that. But I'm I'm thinking about what will their career projections end up probably being like. I'm more confident that Jokic will keep on soaring rather than. Giannis continue to soar, or at least I feel like I Jokic will soar a little bit more. The last if time I saw Giannis okay. on the basketball court, recency bias is not kicking my ass, but he I mean, was scared it, it to is. shoot free throws. He it threw is. that bitch literally at out of bounds. And I've never seen Jokic do that shit before. We don't got to slander Giannis a big I up know, Jokic. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But things like that, when I think about, I'm projecting as to what. What can stop you? What is what what is what is a hole in your game that there is just unfixable and it's just bu built in the type of player you are, you know? And okay. I can't I can't okay. think of one. I agree. When it comes to you, I another one of these Unless times where I'm very I respect that you're confident enough to do this. 
because I damn sure think Jokic is going to be top 15 when he retires. I give Giannis a one spot nut a notch above him because of DPOY and everything else is similar. And Jokic has four prime years. Giannis is like five or six. But when everything's all said and done, I, think, I will say, yeah, I was just, projecting. It's, it's, yeah, it just feels high, high now, right I now. I can agree with that, but I, yeah. I, I was projecting. Okay. For sure. But if we, if we project and we be honest, 13 is like the floor for where Jokic is going to end up, I think. Like he's okay. gonna be pushing top ten, I think. Okay. It's gonna be him versus Hakeem for like the second or third best center ever. That's gonna be the debate. Or third after Shaq, Kareem, and then whatever the old fucks you want. Like <laughs> okay. it's gonna be like Jokic is pushing top five centers ever with Hakeem once okay. everything's said and done. Okay. Again, I wanna give shouts to Julius Serving, <laughs> one of the most inspirational players to ever play that no, people talk about, yeah. but I feel like at times he's probably just not talked about at all. He's one of the yeah. first of his archetype at that yeah. three range so and this is and this is really mad respect too just because a majority of his prime is in the aba yeah and it's not in the nba and like the talent pool is kind of split so it's like he listen he was able to come into the nba get a ring do all that stuff yeah. again very inspirational guy i i have him in the, in the similar range can we actually get my my next five so at 15 i have dr j 14 jerry west 13 kd wow 12 isaiah thomas jesus christ 11 <laughs> and 11 Shaq. I told you guys, Jesus Christ. I told you guys from the like, get go that like Isaiah it. Thomas is like that. He's like that. There's, and it's, there's no fucking way Isaiah Thomas should be both Wilt Chamberlain. Why not? <laughs> Bro, why not? Do I even, it's like why such not? a golf inability that at the end of the day, the baseline is how good are you at basketball? All the achievements, all the intangibles comes as tiebreakers and secondarily. And the day, if you were telling me Kevin Durant and Will Chamberlain are, and Dr. J and Jerry West and a lot of other fucking guys are not better basketball players than Isaiah Thomas, you've lost your goddamn mind. Tell me why Isaiah Thomas is a better player than them. Okay. Well, first, I'll go with, with Will. We just saw that when you actually think about Will and when you actually talk about him, like he's, he's good, right? Like he's a, he's a, he's a very good uh, NBA player. Great. Yes. Okay, cool. Do Dr. J, the same reason. His prime in terms of like NBA basketball is kind of split. Jerry West is fantastic, but also didn't, was losing every single year. Yeah, greatest loser right? of all time. Exactly. KD, I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, have, I have feelings about KD, but I think that Isaiah Thomas being able, I, Isaiah Thomas being able to, to average 19 and nine for his career and do what he did and this this is a little bit of like pound for pound stuff because he is 6'1 and he's the normal height for a point guard? No, no. I keep going my back, keep going. No, but there's a Isaiah Thomas is I guess the second tallest player on this list if you have um CP3 on your list. But for somebody that size to be able to be an all-star the moment he stepped into into the league, Crazy. lead lead this team and lead the Pistons into this era of like actual dominance over again Larry Mike Magic it's just like I just don't understand where like the playmaking and the scoring is there and then to do it at that size it's like I I feel like he's very very underrated I'll put him way higher on my list now after that talk I wouldn't I mean I'm a little bit higher I can see I can be swayed but 12 is just like absurd and the players above him like, I put him in the teens <laughs> it, absurd it, it's absurd I mean Wilt, yeah. all-time defender, obviously, all-time scorer. Obviously, he's a better passer. Wilt's not a bad passer, but obviously Isaiah Thomas is better there. But like okay. most, if you're, it's obviously a very simplistic way to look at it. But if you're just like looking at like a list of all the ways you can impact a game and give a checklist to each person to determine who's a better player, impacts more areas of the court. Mm -hmm. Wilt, fucking check, 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 and a couple for Isaiah Thomas. Like he just, I think, like I said, there's a baseline of who's a better player that you have to look at first before you apply respect for being small and shit like and that. I would, no, but I would <laughs> I would take Isaiah Thomas. I would take I would I would take Isaiah Thomas. And if we are putting all these guys into a draft and we're like, hey, like who do I want on my team? Who am I drafting first? I'm taking Isaiah Thomas before I take Will Chamberlain. You're taking Isaiah Thomas as a better player over Moses Malone? Yeah. All right, well you just fucking love Isaiah Thomas, I yeah, guess. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, Man. fair enough. He gets lost in a lot of these like great point guard conversations, and it's really just because he's a generational Michael Jordan <laughs> hater. Yeah, <laughs> and and every time every time he opens his mouth, the last thirty years is, hey, listen, I like I was him, I was him, and after you say that enough, people start to say you actually weren't him, and so yeah. I think I think he's he's taking a hit, but I I agree, I really like Isaiah Thomas. He's great. I just think like if CP3 had two rings, I wouldn't put him above KD. Like 
I think he's very comparable to CP3 as a player in many ways. Mm -hmm. And like, you wouldn't dare say CP3 is a better player than KD or Wilt. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a lot of cachet and respect here to Isaiah Thomas. That's not necessarily based on what he actually does on the court. Listen, we put (laughs) we have we have guys we have guys on this list that again played with plumbers and firemen <laughs> and we're doing the, the right we're, we're, doing, yeah. we're doing the thing there's a lot of guys on yeah. here where they're getting CB their respect in the cachet CB so one. yeah so listen okay. when we when we apply it to somebody who played in the 80s and, and like early 90s i i will give it to him. okay also Shaq at 11 jesus christ that's i didn't even notice that he's yeah he's not he's not in my top 10 that's wow he, he's not in my top we 10. buried the lead here that's probably the most controversial <laughs> take here wow yeah i Shaq is very very interesting because I, and like, I had a grapple and I really wanted to put, I had him in my top 10 initially and I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about it. And then the top thing we keep hearing about Shaq is he's the most dominant player ever. Most dominant player ever. Why are you not, if you are the most dominant, why are you not the greatest ever? And so then you have to start like, that title means nothing. you have to start thinking about stuff. And it's like, you're just big, right? Yeah, you're, you're, just, you're, you're just big, that's what it right? Means. Like if we're, if we're playing, yeah. if we're playing at, at the gym or if we're playing at the park, right? Like I'm picking you on your team, but everybody knows like, oh, it's just unfair, but you're not actually better than everybody else. Right. And for Shaq, listen, he obviously had his moments, led to three P all that. Everybody else in the, in the top 10, one can shoot free throws. <laughs> two are you know um comparable if not better offensive players than than he was you have a team above him clearly yes leading a three p doesn't mean nothing like no no it, it doesn't but man. like if you are if you are like uh, the title of like most time again it's just because he's big but i think that everybody else i respect one their accomplishments more and i think that they are more complete as players then, then Shaq is. Does Shaq have MVPs? How many does he have? I can't remember. His one. one. Okay. His one. And that was in like, because again, he had his MVP stolen by Steve Nash. And so there's there's that. Shaq but, had MVP stolen by Steve Nash? No. Wait, yeah. What year do you think Shaq should have won it? 04? Um, 05 or 06. Either, either one of those years. 06 is the Kobe one. I was, and Shaq was washed, so it wasn't. That, it might have been. You think 05. Shaq should have won his first year in Miami? Yeah. One, one, of, those, one of those, I remember it, it was. The way I, I remember it, and uh-huh. the, and a hundred percent the way Shaq talks about it was like yeah. that's the one. Okay, I but like, oh four oh five, he was first team All NBA. He also yeah. was no six though, which clearly was a resume. Pick. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I see what you mean. Wow. All right, I think the yeah, the most dominant thing is a made up title for people to. It's kind of like when people say like uh, I feel like the same thing goes with how, with how people use the word gravity now. <laughs> I think Same that means vibes. something, but I, I see what you're saying. There's a lot of it's a made up title yeah. to award him something that he doesn't deserve, which would be best player of all time. <laughs> because because he doesn't have the MVPs, because he yeah. like there's there's also just other things. And like listen, from the moment he stepped in, he was a force and he was dominant, he was great. But as you just go into it, it's there's just other there's other players that have done more. And he's he was right there. He was a very very tough cut. And if you want to put him in your top ten, a hundred percent, I'm not going to tell you. Oh yeah, Shaq isn't top ten. Yeah, like he isn't uh, worthy of that title. But how much more could he have done though? He, I mean, he could have done a lot. That's always the debate, right? Because like people say, he could have <laughs> been the goat if he wanted to try hard and he didn't. Yeah. Which I understand. Which is why I don't have him like top five or anything. Like I have someone like Tim Duncan above him, even though like. For sure. You could say Shaq is a better player. He just didn't live up to that hype because he didn't try hard enough and it was a work ethic issue that held him back. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he's a truly dominant scorer. If we're not giving it to Jokic yet, Shaq's the best offensive big man of all time. When people say most dominant, usually that means fucking nothing. But when you actually go by skill set, if you have an offensive skill that just can't be stopped, like your scoring is just like unschemable, mm-hmm. a la Kevin Durant, a la LeBron, really, whoever you want to put, that is an incredibly valuable skill set. That's why they three-peated because you surround them with enough talent. You just can't stop that. You're fucked. The only way they lost is when they beat themselves in 04 with, by trying to do too much with the roster and just got punked by the Pistons. Yeah. Other than that, if you have a comparable team around Shaq and he's giving it his all, they're probably going to win, which is a very valuable skill set. He's an underrated passer, solid defender. I think that's enough to get you top 10. But again, I, I don't and have much fair. higher. So and I that's get fair. It. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and argue. I just. Yeah, I, I, the names. Yeah. 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 Well, let's do my next five. Let's go. At, at 15, I got Jerry West. Just respect pick, I guess. Wow. Yeah. 14, <laughs> Big O. Yeah. Uh, 13, Kevin Durant. 
Same as you. Okay. Nice. 12 Hakeem, 11 Steph. Wow. I I'm surprised p- you have too. Steph that early. Yeah. I wanted to put Steph higher. It came down to I was going piece by piece and trying to... This, this is one where my actual bias wanted to put Steph higher. The same way I didn't do it with Jokic because my bias wanted to put that. Mm-hmm. When I actually compared them and tried to be objective in like what I gave other people props for, just people that I ended up giving above Steph just like because I had to be consistent. Mm-hmm. But man, I want to put Steph like fucking top six or seven. But when I went name by name, like next, I'll, let's do my number 10 is Kobe. Okay. I won. I think Steph's a better player than Kobe, to be real. I think Steph's the best offensive player of all time outside of LeBron and wow. Jordan. I think Steph is like top three offensive player to ever live. His wow. impact as a scorer and playmaker with not only what he does with the ball in his hands, but how he creates a free-flowing offense that creates opportunities for others without him touching the rock. Invaluable. It's like Jokic in that he makes everybody around him better. Make 11 sound so much worse now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to put Steph much higher because I felt that way. And I don't think... I th- but when I went to Kobe, it came down to what I was saying when I was comparing people to Dirk. Where it's... Kobe's a comparable player to Steph. He also led dynasties. Has five rings. Which isn't... isn't I don't think is equally as impressive as Steph's championship resume. Yeah. It's a bigger number, but I don't really care about that. But he has sustained excellence, just like Steph does. Also an all-time offensive player, albeit in a different way. He played an era that prioritized ISO scoring because that was the way the game was played. You needed a guy who can get a bucket because there was no movement. Illegal defense made it, so you had to have one-on-one scorers that could beat you. Okay. So despite his lack of efficiency, lack of passing, he had a skill set for his era that was valuable. And it comes to, and he was a good defender. Steph's yeah, I fine. Say, yeah. I, I had to give him that nudge when everything else was equal. But I want to pick Steph, but... It came down to stuff like that. Same thing with like Shaq, who's above him, obviously. Okay, that's not bad. Wow. Not bad. Both of you have your number 10 up. So I want to get my number 10 in here as well. I have Steph at 10. Okay. Wow. I have, I Steph. have Steph the highest here. I would have never thought. All the players Mo, I love, you put higher. Mo is <laughs> sneakily like the most aggressive yeah. with, with, <laughs> with, his, with his picks. He doesn't give a fuck about narrative and preconceived notions. He's he like, doesn't. I think this guy's better. He I doesn't. respect it. You're braver than I, me. I'm a pussy. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I I see Steph. I feel like in a couple of years, not a couple of years from now, 30, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, folks gonna folks like us going to be sitting in this chair and they're going to see Steph Curry. Oh, wow. 10 threes a game, 40%? Give him one of these. And I feel like a lot of people aren't going to actually recognize how impactful yeah. he is on every single level on the court without even touching the ball. So, I don't know. I see stuff, all the things that, he been, that he's been able to do. Of course, he's had, like, his bad moments. You can say he's been exposed and all sorts of stuff. No, we can't. It's, all it's all overrated. So, people will say whatever. Fuck them. You know? But at the end of the day, I think about <laughs> his greatness, how he's, able, how's, how he's been able to maximize, maximize his career through the Mark Jackson and the Steve Kerr phase, yeah. the type of leader he is. Yeah. All that, like... I don't know. I just Steph, Steph pound for pound with when I have players above him or under him, I will I will stand on it for sure. Yeah, for I sure. think I, I think one of the reasons why Steph just isn't higher for me is for what you know ended up being the tiebreaker for you is that everybody else like like pretty much like could play defense. Um, on on this on this list, yeah. minus minus about like you know one and a half people yeah. <laughs> that that we'll see. And to be clear, it's not that Steph can't play defense; it's that. He's a fine cog in a good system that won't kill you. He's not a liability, but he's not overtly impactful in that some of the other people are. Well, he not just, he yeah. just, I feel like the last like three years. He's always been that way. 2016 and stuff. People underrate his defense because LeBron attacked him in the playoffs every play. So you watch <laughs> that, you see it, and you're like, oh, this guy's a little guy getting attacked. He can't defend. I, he's flanked by Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Andre Godawa, Draymond Green. I under, Who else would you attack? No, I, under, yeah. I, understand, I understand that. But it's also just like, and again, it's kind of it's kind of like the injury thing where it's like, hey, it sucks that like it sucks that that you get hurt a lot, but like if you weren't hurt, then we would put you a little bit higher. No, no, it's the all, it's the same it's the same thing with Steph. Where it's, it's like where it's like, look, if you weren't a hundred and eighty pounds soaking wet, like you would probably be a little bit better. But now, and we've seen in the last like three years, Steph be able to hold his own in those situations. But that wasn't why. It was just because everybody around him is big. Like if he was on a normal team that didn't have the best defensive talent ever, he tried. No, but there were moments, even when it wasn't LeBron, but there were moments where he like tried hard. And so I like I respect the effort. He just wasn't big enough to compete with a lot of I with get a it. lot of guys. You're right. But he held up better than people think. Like 
If you yeah, can attack not, every play, of course you're going to get scored on. That's yeah, no yeah, one can, yeah, it's yeah. not He's not Gary Payton. But if you compare him to every other guard in the league, he was never actually a liability. It just looks that way because of the way people had to play in the playoffs against a team that had four other elite defenders. All you could do is attack Steph, but they still had a great defensive rating even with you attacking Steph. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, they just got KD cool. in 17, but even yeah. when it's like him and Harrison that, yeah. I just, there's, and again, I'm, like, he was never, I agree with you, he was never <laughs> early Houston James Harden yeah, bad. Yeah, right? Never a liability. Right, he was never that. But there are there were limitations to him being sure. on the on the perimeter for a good part of his career, uh. especially especially early on when he's when he was as light as he was. Yeah, so that is that, true. So that's that's why. That is true. Yeah, and, and good comparing him like early on in his career, it did. Steph, Steph is a late, late bloomer in my mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot sure. of other people on this list came into the league been that they were like that everybody <laughs> been knew that. that yeah been that like that and it was and it was it was written but for Steph like pieces had to be moved and shuffled around other players were prioritized no one cared of course people knew it was an elite shooter and all that but they just looked at that as that he's a shooter that's it you know mm-hmm. and so ah man i i with that being said still i can understand I, I understand why you guys have him where you have him, but it's just when I see him and I compare him to other players, I'm just like, yeah, defense is not in, is not where I'd like it to be, or it's not where everyone else is at. But when 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 what you do is the best ever point blank period, and you're unfuckwithable, that your defense is, doesn't matter to me, bro. Yeah, I get that, and it's not an ass, so it's like it doesn't matter. Yeah, you could argue that he is like. I, I wouldn't say this, but there's an argument for him as the best offensive player ever. Like, it's not crazy. I'm going LeBron. I put Jokic in the conversation, but, like, you could feasibly argue Steph is the greatest offensive player of all time. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's easy to say he doesn't have defensive impact when comparing him to, like, people like Biggs who, like, change the game defensively. But for a guard standards, his defensive impact is completely fine. Yeah. So if you're, like, maybe the best offensive player ever and a completely fine defender, like, how does that compare to someone who's a great offensive player, a great defensive player? So, like... Depending on how you value things, you could put him that high. I get it. Volume okay. is crazy. Nikhil put up a stat. A few stats to show how insane Steph Curry's efficiency is. On on the all-time scoring list, Steph is the only player in the top 100 with a true shooting percentage greater than 62. One of, them, one of the three players in the top 100, along with Shaq, Dwight Howard, to have an efficiency field goal percentage of greater than 58%. That's nuts. To be... The only people that are as efficient as him are the guys that exclusively dunk. And Steph has the greatest <laughs> range of all time. Do you know how crazy it is? It, it, you make shots more when you're close. So the guys with the highest efficiency are real close. But the guy who has the highest efficiency is the furthest anybody's ever been. That makes no sense. Yeah. Listen, hey, shout out to these fan pages because you guys are like glazing like crazy. <laughs> but yeah. but you come out with like some reasonable and some very helpful facts. Yeah. So I appreciate all the fan pages. You guys make this much easier. Fact. They would rather Keep glazing. die. Keep, Keep glazing. Living. It helps us. They would rather yeah. die than let their goats narrative go to waste, bro. Yeah. I respect it. Man, I respect it too. I wish I had that kind of courage to my commitment. <laughs> it's going to be That's you. <laughs> it's going to be you and Yoke in a few years. Facts. I'm willing to go on that hill. People always call me a LeBron Glazer when really it's Jokic who I really ride for. <laughs> they call me LeBron Glazer for being like normal and like thinking uh, he's like the GOAT and being like how like most people are these days. Yeah. If they heard how I really felt about Jokic, they'd have some words. <laughs> cool. uh, I love it, man. Let's go I to get my it. next tier before we get to top five. Top five, top five. At nine, I have Wilt Chamberlain. Wow, nice. Eight, I listen, you convinced me to put him lower? Don't really give a fuck. <laughs> Eight, I have Shaquille O'Neal. Seven, Tim Duncan. Ooh. Six, Bill Russell. Wow, you have Tim Duncan under Bill Russell. I mean, ah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think like, that, that's not know, like a crazy take. But it comes down I to, know. I mean, again, I, I'm i willing to, yeah, as much as I can. Yeah. But when someone's like by far the greatest player of a generation and wins a title 11 times, like you can only do with what your current circumstances mm-hmm. are. You got to judge them what they did in their era. And you cannot be more dominant in an era than Bill Russell was. It's physically impossible. Yeah. So like... By all actual standards, you could put them like one, but we just know like other people are more talented. When you if you put them in that era, they go crazy. It's but, all, it's also the the lack of an offensive bag kind of hurts Russell because listen, yeah. Ru- if Russell was putting yeah. up real numbers, he would be the oh, greatest player of all time, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? But yeah. okay, yeah, but I, I'm with that. That's cool. Yeah, like it's it's, it's a pure respect thing, and it's like mm-hmm. again, old people, I will chuck them to the side, but. <laughs> Russell is one of the people you just can't do it with. Like, his ages yeah. to the... Yeah, you, you yeah, can't do it I to get what, it, Russell. I get it. 
I like it. It's all right. Yeah. The I'm only not... argument against Russell is like, I just straight up will not respect somebody from before 1980. Like, you have to like <laughs> honestly be like, fuck them in decades. Like, <laughs> that's the only way you can put them lower. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. That's I don't really a have a gripe top, with the Russell thing. It's just, I think Tim Duncan probably should be a little bit higher. I, you, you, listen, you're speaking my language. Yeah. You're, you're speaking Tim my Duncan language. Is one of those players to where. You talking about them Glazers, them munches? <laughs> Tim Duncan has none of that because he's never been an inspiration to nobody. I've never seen anybody re- replicate any Tim Duncan move ever in in middle school in my life, bro. <laughs> this dude showed up to his MVB pictures with fucking sandals on, bro. Chunk glass. What the hell care. is going on? He with, doesn't care. Like, no, no one ever rides for him. I, I see feel with like the Spanish. <laughs> when I when I think about I Tim Duncan, I see that he. No one, ah, bro. When I think about Tim Duncan. I said this in the video I'm creating. He plug never plug. He never <laughs> he never ever gets the title. Never has gone the title of being the face of the NBA or one of the faces. Oh, we're about and to that's cook. a part of thing. That's for a lot. That's for things outside of basketball for the most part. But when you look at what he actually did on the court, it's immaculate. And I would say better than Kobe. It looks like ooh yeah, you don't have better than Kobe. But me personally, I look at those things. And I'm like, yeah, I value that. And he's been the epitome of consistency. Um, and, bro, like, there's just a lot of things about Tim Duncan that aren't favored towards Talk about him Talk about at it. all. And I look at those things. I see past him. And I'm like, I just have to put him higher. So. I agree. I went into it thinking, like, I'm putting Duncan high as shit. It's just when I compared to the people above him, like, you could, you know the names above him. Like, there's yeah. the top five. Like, it, the only way I could put him above Russell if you really want, like sure. Yeah, but, but I'm not. I'm not Bill Russell's like. Yeah. So I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, so like, it's after like, that, like you put him above Bird and Magic, and then we know the top that's three. Tough. It's like that's it's true. just like the, the top five is Teflon. So like you could put Duncan at six if you want, but it's I, I don't. Re- I know Donovan feels otherwise. So I don't funny. really think he's we're, in the next year. I think the other we're gonna, guys. We're gonna we're gonna cut. Yeah. We're gonna cut. I don't hate it though. You can put him as high as like goddamn four, and I'll be fine. <laughs> let's let's go. Can we get my my next uh, the next ones on my list, please? Who do I have? So at nine, I have Kobe. Eight, I have Russell. Seven, I have Hakeem. Six, I have Jesus Bird. Jesus Christ. Seven, Hakeem. Y'all. I want to respect him too. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell y'all something. You've been waiting on this. Let me tell y'all. I, I could not wait until we got to this point. Y'all going to stop disrespecting Hakeem Olajuwon. Okay. I'm going to let y'all know this right now. Uh, just like we talked about before. Everything, all the problems that all the other stars have and all the other like organizational malpractices that these people put these put these guys with and it's yeah. like hey go hoop with four 2k generated <laughs> guys and win and win a title yeah hakeem does that yeah hakeem does that hakeem is one to this day to this day there hasn't been a player in the last 30 years where it's like hey i really need to get better at the post who do i call there hasn't been a player better everybody calls yep. hakeem he could be 75 years old they're still gonna be like hakeem please teach me how to work in the post He's one of the best post players to ever play in, to ever play the game. He's one of the best defenders to ever play in the game. He is one of the his game and for a player who plays in the 90s is one of the most translatable games. Like True. if Hakeem played in today's game, feasting, eating, just absolutely eating. The mobility the, the mobility that he, he has, his ability to score on the interior. He already had an 18 foot jump shot in 1994. Yeah. You tell him, take two steps back. He's cooking everybody. All the <laughs> all the great centers that you had, David Robinson won an MVP. Hakeem cooked him on his own night. Shaq, most dominant. I get it early, Shaq. Swept him out the playoffs. Everybody else, right? Everybody else, he's dominating. And I think that like in an era, especially in the time that he wins his championships, after Jordan leaves, the league is as open as it's ever been. And there's only one person. Somebody he gets back to back. You tell me all these people, everyone's like, oh my God, Charles Barkley's so good. Carl Malone's so good. None of y'all won because <laughs> Hakeem was winning with Kenny Smith and Otis Thorpe <laughs> and Otis Vernon Thorpe. Maxwell. It's it's insane to me just how <laughs> good he is. I like he re- he is the full package. As a center, he's the full package as a player. If you look at his early numbers, his early numbers are off the charts when he really was playing with nobody. There's nothing that Hakeem can't do. He has a handle as well. He's really, really Teflon. And the only reason why he's not top five is because the Houston Rockets decided to not give him another all-star for for everybody else. I think to, to this day, I think that 
even if Michael Jordan was in the league in 94, 95, that the Rockets would have beaten the Bulls. Ooh. I think that I think that Hakeem is it's 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 crazy. It's really, really crazy. Guys, this man was out here fasting for Ramadan, <laughs> giving David Robinson 37 and 15 Shh. on an empty stomach at six o'clock at night. There's nothing he can't do. <laughs> I agree. He's great. There's nothing he yeah. can't do. And I, I would take him over. Like, again, Russell, the offensive bag just isn't there. I want to give him as much respect because he played in an era and a city where, where like, Bo Bostonians and the country, frankly, <laughs> hated him. Yeah. And, like, he was a player and a coach and won eight straight, and it's all fantastic. He just doesn't have the bag like, like Hakeem. It's, it's insane what Hakeem does and it's just so overlooked like the 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 shot blocking the the pass the rebound it it's crazy it's crazy even even like to have three and a half assists on a, on again a team with Kenny Smith and Vernon Maxwell and all these other guys like what what are we talking about he's fantastic he's amazing man i i love Hakeem Olajuwon i can tell <laughs> i, I yeah. love Hakeem Olajuwon <laughs> don't say you've been going okay i mean i agree i just don't agree, disagree with any of that it really just comes down to the names above him. And yeah. the one thing you left out that I think is very important to break into like this top tier of players is Hakeem is on offense, basically big man Kobe, not big man LeBron in terms of how he affects the people around him. He doesn't really elevate guys around him offensively. He's not, you know, a passer, a guy that creates opportunities for others, which it's fine. He's still, that's why he's still a top tier player. Cause he's like you said, arguably the goat defender. I'm fine with that. And one of the best big man scorers of all time. But the other names I have above him, Steph, night and day with how he impacts players around him. Kobe, similar. I could put Akeem there. I just gave Kobe the credit for having fucking five rings. So it's great. But like a lot of the other names have that ability on offense to uplift others and create opportunity for others. Which not to say Hakeem is like a black hole, but it's not comparable to like the other people that are above him. In an era, two things. One. Who else do you want him to pass it to? That's that's <laughs> that's, 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 one, that's, that's, that's one. Two, in an era where like illegal defense like was a thing, and it's either you have to legitimately double or just let him go one on one. If teams are not legitimately doubling, it's Hakeem Olajuwon versus anybody else. And for the entire for in, for the entirety of his career before like you know his twilight years, that's the best matchup on the floor. So it's like it's okay if his assist numbers aren't great. And it's like, he still had, at least in, in those in those two years when you're talking about peak, peak Hakeem, three and a half assists is perfectly fine for yeah, for, fine. for for a center. And I think that if if teams were willing to to double more and... He, he definitely got doubled a lot. Like a no, I know, I know, I know. But, well, al but also in those in those series when he's going against against Ewing and Robinson and, and Shaq, those teams probably, probably thought, Oh, we have Ewing, Robinson, and Shaq. We'll be okay. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Hakeem is going to come in here and cook everybody. Yeah. Cook but again, absolutely everybody. The word you had to use is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine. Wait, talking about, can we look at the blocks that he had? <laughs> He's averaging 4.6 blocks That's a game. Crazy. 4.6, 4.3, 4.2, 3.9. It's, it's ridiculous yeah. how good he is. No, he's the, probably the GOAT defender, I think. That's fair. So he's Embiid with a backbone. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is if Embiid was better at everything. <laughs> and think about how good that is. Yeah. Th think about if the reigning MVP got better on an all-time level. At everything? It's outrageous, bro. That's Hakeem Olajuwon. That's the top 10 player. That's the seventh best player of all time. Fair enough. Hey, again, I'm not, I have no issue with that. It just comes down to the people above him are just like slightly better at some important things. Mm -hmm. And like... Again, it's, the only reason Kobe's above him is because Kobe won five rings and did it sustained with different cores of teammates and like as a longevity thing. But if you tell me Hakeem is like pound for pound the better player, no issue. Russell oh. dominated an era. Shaq, same type of thing. I think comparable type of player, more accomplishments. I'd probably give the edge to offensively. Granted, Hakeem's obviously a way better defender. And then who I have Duncan above him. I don't got to explain that. You have Duncan above him too. Nice. It's just more about the guys above him. And it's always hard with that because like Hakeem is as talented as most of these guys. It's just like when Steph came into the mix, once, you know, whoever else kind of cemented themselves in this top 10, he just keeps being the guy getting pushed out. And I'm but saying, and I'm saying that, that that's, it's wrong that he's the guy to be, to be pushed out because of, of the guys. And especially if we're talking about Russell, Bird, Magic, 
Hakeem is the most complete player out of out of them in, yeah. ter- in terms of two way ability. And I'm not saying you have to kick Larry Bird out the top ten. Yeah, That's yeah. obviously not going to happen. Yeah, but there needs to be eventually there needs to be a stand taken for somebody who <laughs> won back to back rings hasn't has an MVP like you said arguably the greatest defender of all time. And we're just, and he's the one who who consistently has to be yeah. the one to be kicked well, out. It comes down to everybody no. above him has like fucking five or more rings. That's what it comes down to. Is they just like did more while being comparable level and that's, players. And that's why he's at seven. But everybody yeah. else, like, it's it's comparable. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It just yeah, it comes down to a lot of people are similar players like Shaq, Steph, Russell, whoever else you have above him. They just did it. They, I love they want more. You know what I mean? Like it, that's I love, what it comes I love, most I love Hakeem. He's he's amazing. You know what? And I love how much you love Hakeem. <laughs> <laughs> he would be smiling right now. He'd be crying. <laughs> He'd be crying right now, bro. Shout out Hakeem, man. We all love him. Yeah. So on to my my next five. At nine, I have Kobe. At eight, I have Shaq. At seven, I had Tim Duncan. You said Tim was higher. Listen, when it comes to the names ahead of him, I just simply couldn't. Steph do it. at six. I want, yeah, wow. I, have Steph at six. I love. I, I like your list more than my list. I just, I when I look at how, bro, with how wow. he changed the game, there's not a lot of, how many players are there in the NBA who either set a new archetype or legit change the game? Not a lot. Four or five, maybe. Four or five, and Steph Curry is one of them. And when he, when he was given the opportunity Cook. to thrive and excel and peak Steph is just, it's crazy, bro. I don't. I. Uh, it's it just. It's just so hard for me to confidently say. Yeah, I think Shaq is better all time. When I know, obviously, like there's limitation Cook. to two very different players. It's but great. when it comes to how it. important six. And, yeah, six, bro. Wow. Put him five. Fuck it. I love six. It. And uh, it sucks that I had to put him like above Tim Duncan because I don't want to do it. But there's something in me that's telling me like Steph. He's more. He's more pivotal to the success of the NBA. I don't want to say success in the NBA, actually. But actually, yeah, more pivotal than success in the NBA because of the things that he did offensively. Now, maybe now that I'm talking to myself this, maybe I'm not weighing just how important he is and how he transformed the game wow. more than what he actually okay. did on the court. But even then, with what he actually did on the court, it's still pretty damn impressive. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. I listen, I love I love Steph as as well. I it's just shocking to see six for Steph. I know it's shocking, but when it's all said and done, for wow. me personally, he will be at six because okay, because there's not there's there's I don't know if we'll ever see another player in his light year ever. All right, okay. I like it. Okay, listen, there there's an argument for Steph for all the things we talked about before, where the offensive capabilities are so high and will age so well that that outweighs the defensive concerns, and if you're a person that thinks his defensive concern like listen we give magic a pass for defense we just decided that's fine if we just decide that's fine for curry i can see this world like they're honestly not that different they're both average defenders while being light year level offensive players for different reasons yeah why can't the same thing be applied magic has five rings that, that era curry's up to four that is like, true we low key gonna, give magic a pass and we don't give curry it's that is that is very very true hey he's, bam. he's not urban <laughs> he's, he's, he's just not the magic man. That is glazing. That yeah. is crazy. I mean, one thing about, just, one thing about not, yeah, not he, him. It like, took Curry. Curry did have a buffer in his career. He it took time for yeah, him to yeah. go ahead and become him. For sure, for magic out the womb. Yeah, that's fair. It doesn't have the Fine. longevity of some so these guys. A, yeah, he yeah. might. We'll see. But I, it's not. I, I, I want to push back on that a little bit, and I'll argue in Curry's favor. Both Bird and Magic, they're. Their longevity is the lowest of anybody in the top 10. They both have, like, like everybody else, their careers yeah. span, like, 13 years, 15 years, stuff like that. Bird has about, like, eight prime, prime years. Magic, about the same because, and, you know, their careers end for different reasons. But when we look at their careers right now and, like, the 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 group of years that we judged them on, Steph... Like, if we just go from first MVP to now, that's eight years. See, you say that, like, is, you're right about Magic's longevity got cut short. Still 12-time All-Star. He played no, it's wild. Years. It's wild. 12, like, that's like... Well, the, I mean, okay, one of those All-Stars was, he was coming back, and they, like, they gifted him that one. And <laughs> so, like... 11-time All-Star <laughs> in 12 make years. Make-A-Wish All-Star. <laughs> he was. Listen, year two, he got hurt, so he didn't make the All-Star game. He played 37 yeah. games. But after outside of that, he made an All-Star every single career... Every year of his career before HIV. 
Like <laughs> that. That's like it's easy to say his longevity got cut short because it ended at thirty one. Mm-hmm. But even without that, it was still crazy. But I'm, I, I know I'm. But like the prime prime of his career, it's That's really easy. it's really just like his career. And Steph is going to get to a point where his prime is as long as Magic Johnson's entire career. And so then when you start to factor in a couple of the other things, it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a lot. I ain't um, mad at it. It's a lot. So I under I understand. I understand. Yeah. But yeah, these guys are amazing. Nikhil pulled up something. The two greatest offensive players of all time and it's 91 <laughs> Jordan versus 22 Curry. Through through the first four games of the NBA Finals. This is such an ESPN Hilarious game. Hilarious propaganda. Yeah. 30 points per game, 50% field I mean, goal. listen, he was cooking. <laughs> I love that we're adding Jordan's three-point percentage into this like it wasn't on six <laughs> attempts. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was uh, on four attempts. <laughs> oh, literally through four yeah. attempts. <laughs> it's, it's on there. <laughs> Crazy propaganda. I love this. Shout out to GetUp graphics team. This is the type of shit I need. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, I think it's top five time. Top five, top Ooh, five, man. top five. I'll go first, I guess. This is straight chalk, five bird, four magic. Don't really know why. We all accept the magic's better, but I feel that way too. I can't explain to you why. Maybe we'll talk about it. Three Kareem, two Jordan, one LeBron. The definitive top five. Wow. I love it. You you go because yeah that's I, all cause, okay. top five because I think yours is more is closer to, to his yeah so five wow it's same. literally the same, same top five <laughs> same thing. yeah I feel like it's always like this <laughs> yeah, just, get off the tip man look at us <laughs> get off the tip I went first you're on tip <laughs> I guess I'm the only free thinker in wow here. TD four oh man I love that when I tell y'all Tim Duncan <laughs> is fantastic right say your my, top five out loud enough for audio listeners true. so my top five right now. I have Magic Johnson. At, I have Bird at six. Magic Johnson at five. Tim Duncan at four. Okay. Kareem. Then I have Bron at two, <laughs> and then I have Michael Jordan Idiot. as the greatest player of all time. <laughs> 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 so funny. So funny. More on alert, Bozo. Yeah. What are, no, what I'm are kidding, we what are we talking about first? I guess we could talk about Tim Duncan yeah, first. Yeah, that's the most yeah. outstanding. Yeah. We all, okay. So first, before we get to that, yeah, we all agree Magic over Bird. Do one of y'all want to tell me why? I think that Magic's ability. To Magic's ability to elevate the offense is a bit higher than than Bird's. Okay, um, for sure. Uh, Bird is obviously a much better scorer. Um, their defense is similar. Bird is a better defender. Yeah. Um, Not so much that it matters that much though. Yeah, but Bird Bird's Bird's defending is very much just like. He's a very, very good team defender, right? He's not like amazing on ball, but Magic was able to to like get some steals and take gambles enough to like. He's make a playmaker up, on defense. To yeah, yeah, he can he can make up for some stuff, but I think the difference is just the winning. With Magic has two more rings than him, he beat he has the two one advantage in their finals. Yeah, and when you look at the Lakers throughout the eighties, they made the finals like seven times. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was like seven or eight times Magic wins the. He wins the finals MVP as a as a rookie, right? Like he instantly gets there and takes them to a level where they're amazing. And so yeah. I think I think for Matt, there's just a couple more notches on the belt. Yeah, I agree. Than than Larry. But the one thing that Larry has that Magic doesn't is the fact that Larry has three straight MVPs, which is insane. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's in, is... it's insane because it's nobody outside of Larry, Wilt, and Russell yeah. that have done that. And to do that in, I guess, the modern NBA in, or post-merger NBA, that's wild. Yeah, I get it. I just don't care that much about, like, three straight or, like, three with one in the middle. Like, it's cool. It's a cool fact. But I don't think it's an important fact. Like, the I biggest think... reason for that to make it impressive is, like, you beat voter, voter fatigue, which is, like, oh, cool. Yeah, but, but like, then again, magic was it even a thing back then? I mean, you know yeah, what? I mean, you're right. Was voter fatigue a thing back then? Because how can, how can there be voter fatigue for back then players. when like yeah, there's only a certain amount of good players. You don't have ESPN. There's yeah. no Kendrick Perkins hey, back you're cooking, there. You're cooking. There's no Twitter where people are always talk, like. There's no pipeline where people you're are sniping your name you're cooking. every Stop. night. So voter like, fatigue is a symptom of modern media and the hot take system. You're right. Yeah. You're cooking. You're in a position where it's. The entire '80s is built off of these two guys, and so it's either you see the it's either going to Magic or it's going to him, right? Yeah. And then obviously like Michael when he comes in at the end, but getting three straight is wild because even guys like like even guys that we have early on this list, Jerry West, Moses Moses Malone, um, Dr. J, Big O, they did it. Kareem Kareem never got three straight. Who cares? So it's five. Like I'm, it's. 
it's a, it's an accomplishment to be able to to do that, and it's really just a testament to your peak when you were at at your best and you were healthy. You were better than everybody for this for this three year stretch. Yeah, but like LeBron is three and four years. I'm like, people make a lot of hoopla about that because nobody's done it besides him. Well, I mean, LeBron is four and five, which is yeah. Wild. Like, I don't give a fuck about three in a row. Like, I know like that three is impressive. I, mean, I three is impressive, but three in a row doesn't move me more than like three and five years or whatever Magic did. I don't remember the exact years he won his three. That, it being sequential doesn't move me. I get why it, it's impressive. It moves, it's cool. it moves, moves me a little bit. Yeah, it moves me. Okay, well, so we all had magic over Bird. Would yes. you agree for the same reasons, Mo? Yeah, for sure. Cool. I yeah. Now Donovan, tell us why Tim Duncan is better than them. I'm about to. You were, you've been cooking. You've had like several Tim rants. Duncan, give us, man, give us the last it. one. Give us the rant of all rants. Tim Duncan, there is nothing that we talk Put about my mic down. out of anybody <laughs> yeah. in the in the top five. Everything that we ask of from everybody of the all time greats, Tim Duncan has. Tim Duncan has multiple MVPs. Tim Duncan is an is an amazing two way player. Tim Duncan was the tree trunk of a of a franchise for for twenty years. Right? They were able they won fifty straight games for nineteen straight years. Tim Duncan has the longevity in his nineteen season at age thirty eight or no not nineteen but at at age thirty seven. He's first team all defense. He has five championships. He has the Finals MVPs. He has a, he has twenty and ten. There is nothing that Tim Duncan has done that nobody else in the top five has done. And for him to be as great as back. he was for <laughs> yeah. 20 years yeah, to, again, win back-to-back MVPs. Yeah. And we talk about Shaq and Kobe. The only person who was beating Shaq and Kobe yeah. was Tim Duncan. Bro. It, he's he's him. You, and like you said, yeah. nobody's out here saying like, oh my God, Tim Duncan's my favorite player yeah. of all time. Yeah. And it's because he's all he's doing is boom, right? Uh, drop step, hook shot. Drop yeah. step, hook shot. He's getting quadruple doubles in the finals. He's beating everybody. I just don't understand. The on, Literally, yeah. I, I, here's the only thing that I would say that he doesn't have. He never went back to back. Who cares? I don't he, care at all. Yeah. He walked into the league and and led the Spurs to a championship and got finals MVP. Dude, dude 1999, He's amazing. 2010s, <laughs> error was his. The only thing that's... The, the thing that he is missing that, that apparently seems so pivotal because he does, is a 40 I think, inch vertical. If, that, he, if he could jump five inches higher, everyone would be like, oh my God, Tim Duncan's amazing. Well, it's a little more than that. So play the, okay, so I agree. I have no problem with this whatsoever. One yeah, reason okay. I don't have him higher because Bird and Magic are Bird and Magic, and I gave Russell the, the credit for dominating mm-hmm. his era so hard. I have no issue. I think he's in the same tier. Just like I put him a little lower in that tier. But if I'm playing Devil's Advocate and explaining why he's not Bird and Magic, it's he's all time level defense for sure. Right after Hakeem, you could say he's like the second best defender of all time, mm-hmm. which matters. But he's not the offensive engine those guys are, which is very important for just you no know, production and value. He's a great scorer, like 24 points per game in his best years. Really good scorer, especially in the dead ball era. Yeah, not a go to guy that you're. Well, he was a go to scorer. How do I phrase this? Not the guy, he was never the sole guy leading the offense that's really being the engine producing for everybody else. He was, but he was part of a greater system, always had really talented ball handlers, the best coach in the world. It's similar to Hakeem. He wasn't a, he could pass. I mean, not to act like Tim Duncan also wasn't a black hole, but he's not an elevating level of playmaker. So you could say that he's not the level offensive player for reasons, and a lot of that is because of his system and players around him who played a certain way that enabled his talents. But if you were counting all things being equal, his offensive skill set isn't to the par of those guys. And those guys have elevated offensive skill sets that are like the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. That's the argument against him. And that is why he has little to no aura. That (laughs) word is so popular, but it's fucking facts. I hate it. That's fantastic. I hate it. I hate it. He spends two minutes. Tim Duck is the best. Respect the old man. I'm like, well, maybe not for this reason. And then you're like, He's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> He's not ball. hard, bro. He ain't have no... Bro, every single one of these players have a cool, dope-ass, trash-talking story I of told them you. doing dicing someone ask, up, ask bro. The, ask DeMarcus Cousins what happened. DeMarcus Cousins tries to trash-talk Tim Duncan, and what does he do? Tim Duncan, bucket after bucket <laughs> after bucket. He doesn't have to say anything. He's silent. And I just... When you put together everything, like, Duncan is good enough offensively, right, he, to, to, do all, to do all that... Again, the and what we see, what we see with Kareem and Braun, and for them to have that level of, of longevity, 
And for Duncan to also do the same thing, obviously he's not. No, no, no. I'll stop I, you there. Kareem at the last stages of, of his career <laughs> yeah. is not like it's either it's not worlds better than what Duncan was. And Kareem okay. on his last legs is not Duncan being first team all defense. Okay. The problem is when you loop Bron to that because Bron's 38 averaging 30. So it's a little different. That's the part where okay, this is this is the disconnect. So Duncan's longevity isn't about him as much. He's a big part of it. But it's about the team in the front office was incredible and reloaded and allowed him to have that second stint where he wasn't the focal point of the team anymore. He clearly was not the focal point of the team. In his later years, they won those other chips. He was incredibly important. I don't want to diminish that. Yeah. But they had Kawhi. They had Manu. Parker was on top of his game. You compare it to the longevity like LeBron. Why We'll get to that way of the GOAT. He's averaging 30 at 38. Like He's still like the guy. That's where... Tim Duncan's longevity matters, but it's not as impressive as the two greatest longevity. And that's, of all and time. that's why I'm not putting him like top three. Yeah, yeah. Can, wait, can we actually pull up Kareem's um, basketball reference page? Because I forget what the like last four years of Kareem's career looks like. But I know that there's like there's some there's some duds in there. And let's look at the yeah, let's look at the years he won too. What were the years that Kareem won in the end? What, what was their last championships? They yeah. the last one that the Lakers won was eighty eight. Yeah. That's that's the last one that that they win. Yeah, eighty five and eighty eight were the last two, and in, those are so twenty two points per game and fourteen. So the last one he was on Tim Duncan status, where he was getting carried by Magic and Worthy and the whole team. Eighty five, give or take. I think that was that was similar. I can see why you say that. Right, and then and then the the last year, and that that's all I'm saying is that as we get into like those years when he's when mm -hmm. when um, when Kareem is forty and Duncan is thirty eight. They're they're basically doing the same thing, and so you have younger stars who are carrying you to to championships, or not carrying, but like being the driving engine yeah. of your team to win championships. And so that's why, at least for Kareem, it's comparable. It's, it's comparable. Okay. Now, see, we're not arguing against Kareem though. We're yeah. arguing against Magic and Bird. And Duncan, well, Duncan plays nine more years than they do. Yeah, which matters. What? Matters. Yeah. But it, it kind of gets back to the thing I was saying earlier with Kawhi, where. Longevity is a thing. It matters doing it for a long time. But if you accomplish the same things in smaller time, like that's almost impressive in its own right. For the fact, the fact that Magic got the same amount of rings, or does Tim Duncan have four or five? No, same Tim amount of rings. Five. By the time he turned thirty-one, it's fucking bonkers. Like no, it's a, again, it's amazing, and that's why he's that's why he's top five. But Tim Duncan, after to be able to have a second act, and like if Tim stops. Because they win, they win three in five years, and he gets to four at two thousand in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. and he plays for another nine years. Yeah, gets to gets to two more finals, wins a championship over LeBron, right, and and all that and all that type of stuff. Obviously, he's not like you know Tim Duncan at that point, but still. So it's not, so that's the thing. Like, it's not all rings are equal. So like that's an accomplishment, but I feel like it's more of a Spurs accomplishment than it is a Tim Duncan. Of course, he's a big part of it. So again, don't want to downplay it, but. Yeah. How do you parse that? Because like when you compare when it to Magic, Magic never had a ring like that where he was wasn't the driving factor. So it's like you can say five, but, and why, five. But why was but why was that? What do you mean? I'm saying it is. It's I don't want it to be like I don't I don't feel that it is unfair, mm -hmm. and I don't feel that I am knocking Magic mm -hmm. for not playing as much in this scenario as much as I'm saying big enough Tim, Tim. Yeah, big enough Tim. He had this entire second act, and in that second act, it's not like he's just coming off the bench doing whatever. He's still a starter. He's still one of the best defenders in the league, and just because his role changes, that doesn't mean that at the later stages of your career you still can't be effective. Yeah, and so I want to give him I want to give him that credit because Bird and Magic. We're, for whatever reasons, we're never able to do that. And Tim has that, and that matters to me. And so whenever we get into the top four, these are all guys at, that played 15 years or more. Yeah. And he has, again, all the accomplishments that everybody else has and does everything that everybody would want a top five player to do. And it's just like, it's it's amazing. It's, a, it's amazing for him to be at that point and... I think being able to be the foundation of a franchise for 20, like that's really hard. It's about the cry, getting emotional. That's, 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 that's really, yeah. it's really freaking hard. This should mean something to me, man. <laughs> I get it. You know? Yeah, I get it for sure. It's really Mo, hard. Are you, are you moved? Are you willing to put Tim Duncan in the tier above? Oh, uh, man. I don't know if I can. 
I still but I don't think it's crazy. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it's crazy whatsoever. No, I don't think like, it's crazy whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not crazy. It's not crazy at all. Like I said, yeah. he's in the tier. I just think that Magic and Bird, the higher peak, accomplish the same thing in less time, which that, that's a hard philosophic argument of like, is it more impressive to do it longer? Or if the accomplishments are the same, is it more impressive if you did it in less years? Yeah. I don't know how you parse that. That's a that's another 20 minute conversation, but it's not crazy at all. I want to go ahead and get into Kareem third. Everyone already understands like yeah. that. It's universal, bro. <laughs> let's have the GOAT debate. Yeah, let's do that. Real, real quick on the Kareem. It's funny because whenever we get into the GOAT debate, like Kareem is also another one. Uh, another <laughs> one of those guys where like he has everything. Like yeah. he has the MVPs, the championships, all defensive. And we're just like. Good job. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're like, good job. Stay over there. We're talking about real stuff. Well, I can tell you exactly why. Magic and, I mean, Jordan and LeBron are just another level offensive player. And that Kareem I mean, was like Tim Duncan where he was great for a long time. But Magic, but Jordan, I keep saying Magic. Braun and Jordan are just like ascendant level offensive players that make yeah. everybody around them better and are just like clearly levels above everybody else. Kareem was too. But I think it's it's become almost a talent thing that just that, that like it's separates a positional them. thing. True. I, I can yeah, see that. Like just naturally, you're, you're not gonna have as much control over the game if you're not a wing like that. So yeah, and it's just a talent thing. That well, at least like, in, in the in the modern, I mean, they built teams around this. Like that was true. that was the, that was the focal point of a lot of offenses. So yeah, it it just it depends what kind of team that, that you're playing around, who you have around them, and like obviously you can build a team around Kareem. And yeah, K- Kareem's another one of those guys where he walks into the league. He's probably like the best player in the league from like yeah. the moment he's, he it's walks crazy. in, which is crazy. The, the only thing is, it's not about him, right? It's just that Jordan and LeBron are yeah. like the greatest talents to ever yeah. grace the sport. So exactly. it's not. And Kareem didn't do anything to lose it. He there was just two gods that got born after him. Mm-hmm. That's all that it comes down to. But let's talk about which one of those motherfuckers are better, because two of us got LeBron in there because we're under the age of thirty, and <laughs> one of us has Jordan number one because he has the soul of a forty year old. <laughs> Tell us. Uh, let, let's let you. Okay, you taking the floor enough. Actually, you've been yeah, ranting. Thank you. Let, thank you. Mo, y'all, you y'all, go first. y'all tell me. Yeah, Mo, yeah, you go first. Why is LeBron number one? I always, I always say. I said this from the top of the list. When it comes to how you rank NBA players and all that, there's so many things that matter, and one of the most important things is just straight up luck and where you where you plopped, bro. If LeBron James was born. Anywhere else other than Cleveland, you rig whatever draft from or whatever. He was born in L.A. or born in, I don't know, Orlando or some like that. And you have a front office that actually knows what they're doing on a consistent basis. I think I think LeBron has a couple more rings onto his career. You know, it's situational. And that's just something that's pre- straight up luck. Now, while I say that. 2011 did happen, you know, but Jordan did have his blemishes too. And I feel like, you know, it just depends on, could be philosophical. Where do you want to have your biggest L at? At the brightest of brightest stage? Or the first do you want to have your L like in the first yeah. round and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it depends on what type of person you are when it comes to that. I'm not going to go tooth and nail because it is what it is. But when I look at LeBron as an overall player, and what I feel like he could have done if the situations were right, I, I, I just put him at number one. Yeah. I'll go a little more specific. Don't give a fuck about 6-0 in the finals. Like you said, yeah, I don't care if you lose. Uh, I don't, I'm not mad at LeBron for losing in the finals instead of losing in the first, second round, third mm-hmm. round. Don't give a fuck. Six rings is impressive in itself. Two three-peats. It's hard to win back-to-back. I was saying back-to-back MVPs don't matter. Back-to-back finals matter. It's hard for a team to have that level of energy for three straight years, exactly. not get your players poached, be able to not get complacent, do all that. That was led by him. Very impressive. He's 1B, second best player of all time. LeBron, four rings now. His path there was different, but I think what he accomplished legacy-wise is comparable. Just as many MVPs, four rings to six. Difference, six is more impressive, but he at that point- He has one MVP. Huh? He has one less MVP. Okay, sure. And then- so a little bit there he has it pulled up less rings but I think at that point when you hit four five six you're you're what's it called picking at straws like that you're just, it hits a tier I think where the rings become close enough that that's not going to be the defining thing for me the defining thing for me it was at one point LeBron is top five passer of all time at worst probably top three Jordan's a good playmaker not LeBron in that act LeBron underrated score I think just as good of a score as Jordan do it different ways the fact that LeBron's pass first 
and not doesn't have that killer mentality or whatever, makes people think he's not as good of a scorer. He, every scoring record on the planet, LeBron's at the top of the list. Or up, if it, if Jordan has it, he's near the top, equally with him. The most clutch player of all time, the most game winners, all that stuff that you know LeBron accumulated, all that better. Defensive peak, just as good. We know LeBron got robbed of the DPOY. Jordan has a DPOY. That's because it also came in a different era where media literacy was a little different. Nowadays, only bigs get it because voters realize bigs have the most defensive value. Back in those days... Hakeem might have got Jordan's DPOYs or whatever. So different landscape there. I think at their peak, 2011 LeBron, just as good of a defensive player as Jordan. And now the number one thing, same argument you have for Tim Duncan. LeBron's fucking 38, averaging 30 points per game. The longevity and the fact that he's able to continue to be this good, well, even if you say all other things are equal, which I think a lot of them shade towards LeBron, the longevity alone is, I think, the deciding factor. Okay, that's fair. I think I think that's all fair. I think... One of the things that you gave respect to it, but I don't think that... I didn't give enough? <laughs> huh? I didn't give enough respect? Yeah. <laughs> Winning two three-peats is crazy. It is. That's, 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 a- that's, 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 that's actually insane to, to win, to win two, two three-peats. I think for, for Jordan, and I've gotten to a point, listen, I think Michael Jordan is the GOAT. If you think that, that LeBron is the GOAT, hey, cool for you. Like, I'm not... I'm not like gonna lose my voice arguing with you over it. I will. Would I? Would I? <laughs> better agree, motherfucker. What, what I am doing at this point, and the work that I am doing in these streets, when I <laughs> when I have this conversation, is more about the standard in which you argue with these guys, yeah. because I think that there are discounts that Jordan fans make towards their player, and there are things that LeBron fans overlook for for LeBron, and it's just like if you're gonna do this for one person, do it for the other. So I'm really just arguing about the standard. But if we're talking about these two, I think that. And I'll use the same way that you use the argument that I had for Tim. I'll use the argument that you used um, for Kawhi and for Bird and for Magic. Is that everything that LeBron is doing over the last 20 years and everyone's like, everybody who argues against Jordan always says, oh, you only think that his career happened like within six years, yeah. within eight years. Hey, like everything did happen, right? Like a lot or like a lot of things did happen in this eight year period. And so it's yeah. like you... I do think that it there is some credit to just nonstop winning. Like mm-hmm. the moment he starts winning, it's very it goes uh, nearly a decade until he stops. And it's like it's I mean retired to recharge. We can't pretend that didn't happen. Like no, but he takes off a of basketball for two years, and then his first full season back, he goes on another three peat, which is like wow. Yeah. And so again, the 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 defense is, is the same. I do think that, that Jordan is a better scorer than LeBron. Sure, Marjorie, um, I'm fine with that. But like the defensive peak is obviously LeBron has has the passing. I I just think that, that Jordan and what he provides in the fact that in a very, very concentrated part was undoubtedly just like this figure in which everything like revolves around and just the the amount of winning that happens on his basis yeah is crazy mm-hmm. and for lebron there are there there's some bumps in the road that come at a point where you're just like it it's weird that it's happening now and obviously like when you like if you're just looking at basketball reference and you're like yeah. oh we're like you won a championship here and you lost a championship here it's it's there i don't really care about the 6 and 0 oh, but i do care about the 6 yeah for sure i, I, I agree I, I do think that i don't think that Having six rings and having four rings is in the same tier. Yeah, I, it's I, six and I one think, four. For I sure. think if it was five, it would be it would be comparable, and I'd be like, okay, it's whatever. But yeah. I, that extra one is just. I think this comes to when you there's a threshold. Like all the great players have like yeah. three or four at minimum, mm-hmm. and I think at a certain point, like a lot of the fact that Jordan had two three peats, mm-hmm. he's the center of that obviously and the driving force. But it's a team accomplishment as much as it is him. Like. Winning three rings in a row isn't hard because it's hard for a star player. It's hard for a team to maintain that. I understand that. I understand so that. he had the blessing of being with the best front office of his era who built the best team around him that had the longevity because he was in an era where free agency wasn't what it is today and players can be poached and like you can stay together. He, he has that luxury that LeBron just doesn't. So when you apply that context, like I think the way he got to four and the way he got to six are of similar impressiveness. 
Can we get to some crown eater arguments that I do want to get off real quick? God. Go Nobody's ahead. ever lost in the finals as bad as LeBron did in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 nobody's yeah. ever done. The Spurs beat him down. Nobody's yeah. ever nobody's uh, ever beaten anybody as bad as LeBron lost. I don't hold 07 against LeBron. I think if you do, you are completely wrong and off base. Yeah. That's more of an accomplishment than anything. But I, there's just like that one and 2011. And to have those two on, on your resume are things I'm like, Thing like that, that's kind of that's kind of sus. That's kind of suspect that that you have those on, on your resume. Twenty twenty bubble, that's not a Mickey Mouse championship not and, at all. And we are a pod where we give twenty twenty its respect. We give the bubble its respect because it's it's really hard to be in a situation where like your your mentals are all off. And everybody says it's the highest level of basketball yeah. because there's nothing else around and you're really just playing. Like, listen, TJ Warren was able to play well because there's nobody looking at him <laughs> in, the, in the boat. There's nobody five feet away. Yeah. And he doesn't feel that pressure. He's able to put up 50 any, any night. And LeBron and AD were able to, to do all of that. So 2020 is, is a great spot. But 2014 and 2011, they leave a really big stench for me. I and guess. You could also be like, Michael getting his teeth kicked in by the bad boys is a stench for me. Michael having to retire because he got tired and coming back and doing it again leaves a stench for you because that's an advantage that other players don't have. So that ruins longevity to a bit. Like, you can you can pick and choose your spots. Like, obviously, LeBron's happened on the brightest stage, so they have more of a place in your memory. Yeah. He got to the finals. Jordan got his teeth kicked in the first round instead. Like, it's... You can decide that that's more embarrassing because you remember it more, but it's not actually a worse season than Jordan's debt lows. Nobody's ever been beat. <laughs> Nobody's ever been beat as bad. The Sixers <laughs> with Pepe Sanchez didn't lose that bad. <laughs> they didn't lose that bad. Pepe Sanchez. <laughs> like, oh God. it's just, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You, you was getting tormented by J.J. Barrett. <laughs> that's relaxed. And oh it's God. also... One one thing that I want to address for like the LeBron and Jordan thing, and this is what I'm talking about, like with the standards and mm-hmm. stuff. When when everyone's like, "Oh, Jordan six and zero in the finals," and then LeBron fans say, "Oh, well, he he didn't have to play the the greatest team of all time." Yeah, you kind of have to give Jordan credit because he was the reason why, like, like he didn't have to play the greatest team of all time because he was the greatest team of all time, I hate that and argument. like he is the driving force for that. And so it's like, if he was the greatest, please team of let all time, Le- was let LeBron. Go seventy three and nine and win a championship, and everyone, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my God, look look at look at what LeBron produced." Jordan went seventy two and ten, and he was the driving force of it. And his team is the greatest for like six out of eight years, and it's because of him. And if it was and if it was LeBron that was doing that, everybody would be glazing and giving him that credit. So I think that for Jordan in that respect, but that's, that's just that's devoid of all that. context. If LeBron was on a team that drafted Scottie Pippen, signed Dennis Rodman, built this great, you team. would still say, "Oh my God, like Le- LeBron, Le- LeBron led this team. He's on the greatest team of all time. Like why?" Why else would why else would he be yeah, the goat? But that just has nothing to do with either of them. That's about the front office around them, which again, it only is possible because Jordan's the best player in the world. Like that makes the team go. It, it has nothing to do with LeBron that Kevin Durant signed with the Warriors in the same way it has nothing to do with Jordan that that didn't happen to him because the free agency world was different. It's a different NBA. You have to give him credit. No, I don't. It has you nothing do. to do with that. You do. <laughs> you do. His team is irrelevant to the fact that LeBron faces he's, musical caliber. He is he's the he's the greatest. His team was the greatest. And he is the driving force of that. I agree. And, and he gets credit for that. Stop that just that. has nothing. You're comparing the way, that. The way you just said it lets me know that he does not get credit. Well, he's the number two <laughs> player of all time. Yeah, so I think he like, gets a fair amount of credit. You're yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, he did that's it. Just, you're, he you're did it. That happened. That. You're com- that, he's the number two player of all time for a reason. And you're just conflating that with the fact that LeBron faced the greatest team of all time, which is just like... That's me, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It just has yeah. nothing. It's just apples to oranges. It has nothing to do with the fact that he plays the Warriors. Like, just because they're the second greatest team of all time, the no, context of why game. he had to face the Warriors is just completely different. The, the, the NBA is a different world where Kevin Durant can sign with a Golden State Warriors. The once in a generation cap spike that allowed that is not comparable at all to anything Jordan faced. Like, that's just like nothing to do with anything. Because Jordan was that. No, he wasn't. That was completely, <laughs> this is just completely different. Oh <laughs> it's my God, not. Yeah. That's, they that's were, the same thing. They, the they, were, they were literally, at the time, the greatest team of all time. And it's like... So you're telling me if X, Y, Z, some of the top two free agents around that time period teamed up forces... Like that doesn't move the needle whatsoever. If Charles Barkley signed with the Jazz and get his teeth kicked, and they got their teeth kicked in because a weird rule allowed that to happen, and they beat the shit out of the Bulls, 
It's the same. Like, oh, and this like, is, oh, okay, and this fault. is, this is, this is my problem. Let's let's go. This is my problem. He's so mad. With, I am I am now now I'm actually upset because this this is my problem with with LeBron fans and with a lot of the LeBron arguments is that there's so many excuses and there's so many oh my God. there's so many excuses and there's so many like oh well if this happened and if that happened and if you actually think about it and if you carry the two on this shot up like listen he just didn't it like things just didn't play out and I feel like when we're talking about like LeBron and Jordan a lot of the times Jordan fans talk about stuff that like did happen yeah. and then and then LeBron fans are like well if this this and this happened then that would have happened as it's well it's not excuses and it's, it's a, a being a critical thinker and yeah, that's using context like it's, all it's this so, is a majority of a lot or well, not a majority but a lot of the arguments are based off like circumstantial evidence and, like, and just like, life. like it's life. No, let's go it's life. let's go it's life this is this it's this is literally happens to every single human regardless of what aspect of life you're looking at bro it's just all about luck and jordan was straight up lucky with what he had it's not and luck. you ranked people higher on your list and you're like listen sometimes you got to be lucky sometimes you got to do all this and you gave them you gave other people other you gave other people that, at 15 and 13 credit for being lucky and now that we get to to one and two you you want to say like oh well lebron was unlucky and you don't want to give jordan the credit for being lucky and all i'm saying is that it's a different standard when you guys are arguing and that's all i'm let arguing me fucking for cook because right now. now i'm pissed now you got me mad <laughs> He said, it's always excuses. It's, it's always not excuses. It's called being a fucking critical thinker and analyzing it's things outside. critical thinker. Whenever you look at it. <laughs> yeah. it's you, so use, your, use your brain. <laughs> Funny. It's so easy to sit here and be like, six is a bigger number than He's four. You can re- everybody bad. can read a box score and tell you six is a bigger number than four. It, that is, it takes no type of analysis or discourse or anything to just look at a result and be like, this guy won more than this guy. He's better. Simply saying... The second best player in the world joined forces with the third best player in the world. Of course, it's an obstacle that the first best player couldn't overcome by himself. That's not an excuse. That's just a basic understanding of what happened in the world. To call it an excuse is to say that any observation is an excuse. It's just a thing that happened that is a something that he couldn't overcome because the team wasn't good enough. To say that Jordan didn't have the type of obstacle is just a simple observation. It's not an excuse of any sort. It's just, yeah, he didn't three-peat because the greatest team ever assembled got put in front of him because of a weird cap spike. That is an indisputable fact, not an excuse. We were so close. We were so close to not letting this debate consume us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it has done it has done to us what it's done to every other basketball player. <laughs> and it separated us. Like, excuse, I just hate that. Everyone I mean, has excuses. I hate that. I wanted more for us. <laughs> we, we were so close to having, and maybe it was my fault. <laughs> maybe maybe it was on me. But we were so close to having just like a full intellectual discussion about this. <laughs> and now I want NBA Twitter. <laughs> and I hate this. <laughs> my bad. <It's> just, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> to, to anytime people disregard context by saying, that sounds like an excuse to me, I'm like, well, that's just the laziest shit in the fucking world. Like, it's not. If you want to say I mean, your argument about his team was the best team, so of course there was no team better than him. That's a fine rebuttal, but to be like, these are excuses, and to just like disregard them, like it's not just like an observation, is ridiculous. I'm saying, when we <laughs> talk, when we, even if you Most go observing. to, <laughs> even, because he's, he's uncomfortable, most uncomfortable right now. He doesn't, I, he doesn't like this. He doesn't I, like this. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great. I, Every every time that you like get to a to like an inflection point in LeBron's career, it's always just like, oh, but this happened, but that happened, but this happened, but that happened. And while I accept that, when we go to every other player, we accept all the if ands and buts and like, oh, but this happened, but that happened, and then we place them accordingly and we like do that. But with LeBron, it feels like his fans use all the if ands and buts and use that to to catapult him above Jordan. And so that's why I'm just like, uh, like it just, it just, <laughs> <laughs> like down and looking for <laughs> the I love hanging out with groups of three because I could go nonverbal and they entertain each other. That's exactly us right now. Set it out, set it out. Free birthday fuck Free money. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, we can wrap it up here. It's not, it's not uh, going anywhere. Yeah. I love this. We, we, we can move on, man. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to end this off. You're looking at it black and white in this colorful ass world. That's all we know. <laughs> There's more to it. I love that philosophical ass ending. Let's leave it there. People are like black and color, though. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, bro. <laughs> right, man. This is the longest episode in TV3 history. We're at over two hours. We had to do Fuck. it. I haven't done a single TikTok yet. We had to do it. But it's fitting. Episode 50, we're in person. It's the GOAT must. debate is finally had. It's a must, bro. But. What time is it, Mo? <laughs> Oh my god! This man just knocked over water. Oh my this goodness! The live okay. fuck up. Oh my goodness! It's fine. You know what made me knock it over? What? TikTok eaters. <laughs> the crayon eaters. Oh, the crayon eaters. <laughs> <laughs> fuck! I had it like fuck. <laughs> god damn it! Wow. That's all good. Luckily, it's not a not a large portion of water, so we'll let it rock and keep going. Yeah. Yeah, man. It is TikTok time. As always, like we've done the fa- past fifty, we're gonna start with the draft. Let's do it. This time. We're going to do a draft of players whose first name starts with the letter J. Oh, let me get my phone. I'm ready for this. Thing. Yep. We did a, a K name draft a couple, like a month ago now. Y'all loved it. It's our biggest TikTok ever. Shit fucking banged. Granted, we had Kobe Bryant, Kyrie Irving, some big names in there. <laughs> this time, we don't, but we'll see what happens. Damn. Cool. So, Third. let's draft right. NBA lineups with only players whose first name starts with the letter J. All right. We good? Yep. We good. All right. My first player, give me James Harden. Okay, wow. I'm surprised you went there with the first pick, given your disdain for James Harden. But all right, listen. Sometimes, sometimes he can hoop. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes wow. he can play basketball. Wow. Okay. Where are we going next? But also, I knew you tried to get him, so I'm spiting you. All right. Especially I after for sure that, I would have picked him. Especially after that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> James Harden is crazy. Go ahead and give me Jason Tatum. That's also crazy. But all right. Okay. Who you got? Here's interesting. First off, am I three? Give me Julius Irving. Okay. Wait, this is all time. Yeah, of course. Wow. Of course. <laughs> you got it. You got it. It's okay. okay. Julius serving, And then. Don't do it. Then my center. You know what? Give me Joel Embiid. Ah! The best center on this okay, list. Okay. okay. Wow. It. Okay. There's only like three MVPs on this list and I got two of them. So you got Julius serving, And Joel, Joel Embiid. Embiid. The 76ers chemistry. Fuck, man. <laughs> Damn. That's such a good. <laughs> All right. My whole list is cooked now, man. <laughs> Go ahead. So I got Jason Tatum. Who do you have? James Harden. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Who's it? You can't. You're not even gonna tell me. I, I'm telling no, you who's that third MVP? I don't know. <laughs> nope. Ah, oh, shit. All right. So alongside alongside Jason Tatum, go ahead and give me. I don't know. John Morant. Okay. Give me Jaw. It's no, not, not bad. Not a terrible pick. Okay. All right. Well, I have James Harden. I'm going to run James Harden at my one. Okay. And I'm going to run Jalen Brown at my two. Okay. And now I'm going to run Jimmy Butler at my three. Ooh, okay. Wow. New school ass team. I, got, I hear you. It's big as fuck. Okay, I like it. Whoa. Okay, let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's relax. All right. I love having these different cameras. <laughs> so at my four, go ahead and give me... Jaron Jackson. Fuck, Jr. I was about to pick him next. Yeah. Give me Jaron Jackson Jr. That's good. Oh, that just ruined my team. Okay. I'm going to go, at my four, give me James Worthy. Okay. That's and so good. You know what? I'm just going to go all in on talent. My one, give me Jason Kidd. Okay. I like that. That's a good team. I like that. I got the old heads. Who would have thought? Damn. Our teams Sheesh. are legit flipped. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So My, my front court is going to be so disgusting. <laughs> Damn, dude. Okay, so at my two... Actually, yeah, my two, give me Jamal Murray. Interesting. Wow, my team's looking really nice. This is going to be so nasty. Y'all don't say anything. At my four, <laughs> at my four, give me Jermaine O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> that was negative spacing. Oh, <laughs> my God, bro. And then <laughs> and at my five, give me Jared Allen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next fan, give me Julius Julius Randle. <laughs> Shit, man. I said her? Yeah. I got to. Oh, you're getting bodied. You guys' team suck. You're getting bodied. <sighs> you know what? Just to give myself some spacing, give me JJ Redick. Give me a spacer out there with all these ta- all this talent. I hate this man. <laughs> I hate this man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys' team suck. Oh, you guys' bro. team suck. My team is okay. Who's but who seems first off, listen, My first three is fantastic. No, your team sucks. My first. My, my team is whooping your ass. <laughs> My team is destroying both of yours. You have Julius Randle at your center. What are you talking about? You're I do winning. have Julius Randle, but you have Jermaine O'Neal. <laughs> We've done this before. Don't act like Jermaine O'Neal's not a bucket. Don't act like he's not a bucket. That's ridiculous. There are Go no watch buckets film. with Jerry Go Jackson. watch film. Sorry. Go watch film. 
<laughs> Jermaine O'Neal is a buck. He's uh, like that. Why you got Jermaine? Get out Him of and here. Ron Artest would have randomly. You think Jermaine? Who wasn't from the Malice at the Palace? I'm not gonna lie. Y'all have succeeded in drafting two of the worst lineups in TD3 draft history. Nah. These teams are fucking horrendous. Mo has two power forwards and two point guards. What the fuck were you cooking? Donovan has the worst basic I've ever seen in a front court. What were y'all got swept? This is crazy. Nah, nah, man. <laughs> this is horrible. I like Jamal. I like Jamal. You Jamal think just because you have your little white boy running around shooting threes <laughs> and JJ running that I you guys face? Relax. You? Relax. <laughs> Relax. That's true. <laughs> Relax. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, the talent is just hilarious looking at this. Yeah, bro. This is such a steep. Because <laughs> I have an MVP okay. on my team. It's okay. I have two. I got a delinquent on my team. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, man. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to run back something we haven't done in a long time. Okay. 20 questions. I figured that was one of the first things we did to catapult us in the algorithms of getting us popping on shorts. Let's bring back a classic for episode 50 in person. Bet. All right. Let me let me pull up this guy's basketball reference just so I can answer y'all's you, questions. You want to go first? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'll let you cook. Oh, let me make sure y'all can see in the window. <laughs> oh, let me see if a the window's so far. I, guess. <laughs> I, know, I, just, yeah. said, I just said it. Just blinds. <laughs> All right. Y'all good? Yep. Hit All that right. TikTok camera. All right. Y'all have 20 questions to guess this NBA player. Is it Shabazz Muhammad? No. Fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was he drafted after the 2010s? Not after the 2010s. So from 2010 and later, he means? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Nice. Young player. Ne- next time, please specify your question. <laughs> Is he a starter? Yes. Currently, I mean? Yes. Okay, he's currently a starter. Currently a starter. Has he ever saw an all-star team in his life? In the NBA, of course. Uh, yes. Oh, he's a... He's an all-star in 2010. Is he a guard? Yes. Is it D'Angelo Russell? No. Fuck. I'm firing off. Wow. Okay. Who y'all got? Was, was, y'all he, got? Uh, was he a center? No. Bro, he just told me he's a guard. I just said Oh, he just said he's a guard? What <laughs> the fuck? I didn't hear that. Bumble. I didn't even hear that. Damn. Is he a good defender? <laughs> no. He's, no. No? No, he's not, he's not known for being a good defender. So he's like actually bad? That's a, that no, another question. I mean, okay, I just... We won't elaborate further then. Okay. So not an outright good defender. So he was an all-star? You want to ask if he's a good shooter? Or should we assume he is? I'd assume that he is if he's an all-star. Oh, well, whoa, 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 whoa. If he's not a good defender and he's an all-star, I feel like he's got to be a good shooter. Yeah, he has to be. No, wait. Unless he's just like a straight finisher. At the re- should we just ask? Yeah, sure. Is he a good shooter? No. Okay, wow. thank, thank God, God we asked. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. All right. Okay, what's well, the down? How many non-shooters point guards that were drafted in the 2010s? Non-shooting point guards who were drafted in the 2010s. Is it John, who is was it, an all-star. It, it, but he said the de- the defense was meh. And that John, was a strength for John Wall. Yeah, John Wall was a good defender. Of his career. Ooh, has going? he won an MVP? No. Okay. No MVP. I was thinking Russ yeah. for a second. <laughs> oh, Russ was like 2009 though, wasn't he? Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, man. All-star guard. Should we ask the team he's drafted by the conference? Right. Yeah. We're getting into the later Was he ones? drafted by a Western Conference team? Yes. Okay. West. Drafted by the West. So it's not Derrick Rose. Oh, he won MVP anyway. It's not him. Yeah. So uh, it's not D Rose. Not what, a good what, shooter. Was he a top 10 pick? Yes. Okay. Oh, we're thinking point guard. It might be a shooting guard. I mean, he question. was a top 10 pick. We have seven questions right, left. Do we want yeah, to narrow? Yeah. Should we narrow it down point yeah, guard or shooting guard? Yeah. Is he a shooting guard? No. Okay. He's a point guard. Like he's a point guard. Okay. So how many point guards? Can't shoot. So we're getting into the teens. Okay, we're getting close. All right. Not a good defender, not a good shooter. So he's a elite finishing point guard that made an all-star team. There's there's Shea. Was Shea drafted in 2010s? Yeah, he, he was drafted in uh, 2018. Okay, is there anything on his list? Not a good shooter, not a good... Sh- it could, it, could it be Ja? It could be. It could also be Shea. Do you want to try both? Be... No, nah, I'd, rather, I'd rather see... Well, yeah. How do we narrow it down again? All right. Was he? We're gonna have to put a shot clock on y'all. Fuck, man. Yeah, we do. Let's go. Narrow this down. How do we narrow this down? Um, height. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we can do height. Is he over six foot four? Is he six foot four or over? No. Is it Jaw Morant? No. What the fuck? Whoa, man. This is not Jaw. This is not Shea either. Oh wait, no, he's. So yeah, draws over Shay's over six four. Yeah, we have five. Who is this man? We have five questions left. He's currently he was an all star. He's currently a starter. Currently a starter. He's below. Oh. He's below six four. Wait. 
could this be? When was Drew Holiday wasn't drafted in no. the 2010s, right? He was like 08 or something. But Drew, he's also over 604. He's 65. Drew 65? Wow, okay. Sir, producer Nikhil, could we stop highlighting stuff and giving hints? <laughs> I don't appreciate the side coach. Oh, yeah, he's not a good defender, so it can't be. Shout see, that's, out to see, that's wrong. That's wrong. Shout oh. out to fourth member. Y'all should lose a question for that. I mean, we, we weren't picking Drew Holiday anyway. We already deduced yeah. it wasn't Drew. Yeah. Not a good defender. What other all star point guards are there? It's not I Ben Simmons. I don't know why we're so stumped, bro. This is embarrassing. Let's let's go. Ben Simmons was drafted in the East, so it's not Ben Simmons. He's Fire also off. under 6'4. Fire off two. some questions. Hell no, I'm taking my time. There's only four left. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. You can have this a four hour pod. Oh, you gotta be just let it be that. I'm getting this shit right. It's, uh, not, Eric, it's not Eric Bledsoe. He didn't make an all star team. Fuck no. Currently, I kind of need to know when he was drafted. That's my biggest thing. Yeah, the year? Then I, yeah, I need Should to we know do the, like 20 to 2015? Let's do that. Was he drafted between 2010 and 2015? Let me double check. No. No. Not, oh. 20, not 2010. Not, it could be De'Aaron Fox. Ooh. We're at 17. Is this De'Aaron Fox? It is De'Aaron Let's Fox. Let's fucking go. Give me yeah! that. It is Fox. Oh, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> So close to stumping him. That draft yeah, so close. I, I see I see how you were iffy on the defense. Yeah, yeah. He's Damn. not a strength of his. I see that. Yeah. Okay. And that was I don't know why that was so hard. It was just the year for me. <laughs> one all star team for De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, yeah. I figured it was like a low level all star that only had a one or two with the way you were like had a check. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That was hard. That Let's was move on. Hard. You doing one now? No, no, we okay, we, cool. we, we listen. We were this, yeah. <laughs> this is a two and a half hour podcast already. We don't got time for multiple twenty question games. Next thing we're going to do... We got to get through it. I'm going to ask you guys which NBA player is better with some funky combinations of player skill sets. Okay. This is so ugly. Let's do it. So, which be NBA good. player is better? Right, let me just ask that. Which NBA player would be better? Luka Doncic with Raymond Felton's body oh. or Steph Curry with Dylan Brooks' shooting? Steph it, Curry with Dylan Brooks' shooting? No, it would be Luka with Raymond Felton's body because he already has Raymond Felton's body. Yeah, but he's, he's not going to be fucking 5'11", bro. <laughs> He's, he's already, funny. he's already, listen, he's already a husky, a husky <laughs> kind of guy. Yeah, I know, right? but now make him 6'1". <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, Raymond Felton built like the couch in my living room, bro. Like, <laughs> damn, that's him? <laughs> what? Shit, that's him? Is that is a current Raymond Felton's body. Listen, <laughs> this is what James Harden looks like when he's trying to get out of a city. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when James Harden's up saying he looks like this. A Raymond Felton or a Rick Rose, man. <laughs> Alright. Damn. Now I'm taking I'm taking I'm taking Yeah, Luka. yeah, definitely Luca. Definitely Luca. I don't you know. Can't, you can't take the greatest shooter of all time and, and give make him Dylan, Dylan Brooks, Brooks. shooting. <laughs> I still think he's going to be effective. Yeah, bro. He's still going to hoist the motherfuckers. He's not going to make them. He's going to hoist them. He's going to run around, but he's just going to be doing cardio. <laughs> Can't do that. Right. Trey Young with Jalen Brown dribbling. Oh, okay. Or Jalen with Trey Young defense. Jalen with Trey Young defense, bro. <laughs> really? Wait. Wait, who, who would be better? Yeah. I think it would still be. Wait, Jalen with Trey. Jalen with. It would be Jalen with Trey Young's defense. <laughs> Jalen with Trey Young's defense is like I don't know, but Danny like Granger. <laughs> Jalen with Trey. Oh man, I don't know. If you take away six one Trey Young's ability to go left, he can't do anything. No I'm one's take, passing you. No one's passing the ball to I'm, him. At, I'm taking. At I'm taking Jalen. Jalen with Trey Young's defense is Jordan Clarkson. Nah, he gets twenty seven tonight. I'm, I'm taking. <laughs> I'm taking, taking Jalen Brown. I'm taking Jalen Brown. Uh, <laughs> It's just too good. Yeah. The offense is too good. Okay. <laughs> Joel Embiid with Chris Paul strength or Jokic with PJ Tucker height? Jokic with PJ Tucker height. Give me Jokic. Go, yeah. Give me Jokic, bro. Just that's 6'5". Just, that's that's, just, that is LA fitness basketball right there. 6'5", <laughs> high post, doom, 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 doom. Yeah. That's that. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> Minus a foot. Uh, bro, yeah. that's just, that literally just sounds like Kyle Anderson. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, That's hilarious. <laughs> John Morant with Lucas Vertical or Damian Lillard with Ben Simmons jump shot? Ooh. John Morant that can't jump or Damian Lillard that can't shoot? I think I would take Dame that can't shoot. <laughs> I don't know. John who can't. If, if He's still a great passer. He's like Rondo. Ja is 6'3", run and dunk man. If he can't <laughs> run and dunk, he's not in the league. But he's passing, though. He's no, passing. No. He's passing. He might be Rondo. He might be cooking. 
That's literally Rondo who can who can jump, bro. That's he's. Yeah, I'm taking definitely John Morant easy. I'm taking. What Dame. is Dame? What is Dame providing to me other than his sh- insane? Yeah, shooting? I mean, he might be like Markel Fultz on a good day. I guess that's gross. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Shout out to Markel, but that's, that's gross. gross. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious yeah give me give me give me that boy okay lebron with michael porter jr passing wow. or jason tatum with the nasus's bag jason oh my give me lebron it has to be lebron, lebron. LeBron. <laughs> the nasus's bag is a curse <laughs> listen <laughs> so, listen sometimes the way tatum plays it looks like he already has the nasus's bag God. so i'll go with lebron <laughs> Yeah, bro. I mean, current LeBron, not probably LeBron. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Still, <laughs> the Nassus's bag is crazy. Yeah, that's, that's a curse, bro. That was in my bag when I thought of that. Okay, Giannis with Udonis Haslam's body. Oh, or Kevin Durant with Patrick Beverly's body. KD with Patrick Beverly's body. That's Monte Ellis. <laughs> yeah, that boy nice still. He's kind of nice. He's kind of nice. That boy nice. Again, if you take run and dunk man and put him in a worse body to where he can't run and dunk. I can't. I can't support Low key, that. He might just be Thanasis. <laughs> I almost threw up. <laughs> oh, man. Thanasis, Monte Ellis. You tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Monte Ellis. I'll take Monte. Monte. Ellis. Who's to say? <laughs> I'll take Monte. Ellis. That's funny. All right, that's the end of that one. Which we're flying through these TikToks. It's a long episode. I know Absolutely. you're tired. You've been watching the whole time. You're working out. Maybe you're at your job. Maybe you're hooping. Cleaning your goddamn room. You need to do that. Facts. I know your mom's pissed. She <laughs> yelling at you every day. I can tell. I love that our fans are like 14, so we can say that type of stuff. I know. Next thing we're going to do, classic tier list. We're going to bring back something we did talk about a while ago. Disrespectful dunks. Ooh. We had some videos where we rated them. Now we're going to tier list them. Mo, I think you have the dunks for us. Yep. And we're going to go straight into it. Let's put these disrespectful dunks into a tier list. Okay. All right, first up, we got Russell Westbrook's poster over Rudy Gobert. Wait, Ooh. he did this? I cannot remember this. Yeah, me yep. either. Yep. Oh, Nikhil's about to show with us. He Can't show it to you when because the NBA will copyright us, but yep. we're Robin. watching the <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> Wait, when hilarious. did he do this? Bro, this is, in, this is last year. This is last year. He posted him last year? Yep. Let's watch this. Sorry, guys. You guys should Google this right now. Oh, Ooh. dang. Oh. Nuts all over that man's shoulder. Yeah, y'all got oh, to yeah. YouTube, YouTube these as we say them. Oh, elbow over the rim? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm going to give this a good B. Look how he's mean mugging him and talking that classic Russell Westbrook shit, bro. <laughs> it was tumultuous time, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it a good B. There's some all-time dunks that are higher, but listen, this is this is devastating for Rudy Gobert. It should be B. It's devastating. But who's the dunk on? <laughs> There. So I'm putting it in A. <laughs> I'm putting it in A. A it is. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's hilarious. hilarious. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Wow, that's right. good. Classic. LeBron James Duncan on Jason Terry. Oh, that's S tier. S tier. S tier. I'm almost S-tier. like offended you had to ask. <laughs> yeah. This is S tier. You, you don't even need to pull up the highlights. Everyone know what it looks like. You should have just told me this is S tier and I would have agreed. <laughs> Poor Jason, man. Ah. The highlight of his career. That's what he gets for talking about his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love that shit. All right. <laughs> John Morant's dunk on Malik Beasley. Ooh, this is S or A. It's not going lower than A. I have to see this again. All time John Morant dunks can't be lower than A because they're just the most disrespectful dunks you've ever seen purely by the fact that he's small and he's so high in the air. Yeah. Like, how the hell do you get up that high when the offense is half court like that? Now, they called David Thompson Skywalker in his prime. This must be what they were looking at. This must be Skywalker. Look how he's cocking it back, too, man. But then again, small defender. Can I tell you something? I'm not moved. Wow. I'm not moved by this. We have to put this in B. He's it's, not- in, it's, in, it's impressive, but it's not disrespectful. Why? It's Malik B. He's taking a charge. He doesn't it's do Malik anything. B. Okay, fair. Touche. His back touched the ground. If your back touched the ground, it's inherently disrespectful. He was flopping to try and get a charge call. Nevertheless, the back touched the ground matter. has got to be yeah, A. Yeah, bro. No. It doesn't matter. No. <laughs> if your back's on the ground, you're automatically A. We'll from here on forward. Oh, this man. is a B. It's a good dunk. Not all time. Sorry. Uh, man, man. <laughs> all right. What's next? Carl Anthony Towns dunk on Jaron Jackson Jr. Now you put this, this man on the screen. <laughs> I don't remember this happening. When did he do this? This happened. Is he like this? Believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh. okay. He kind of got up. Listen, Ooh. that was that straight long arm extension. Long man dunk. Magic Johnson. I mean, Michael Jordan Space Jam style. 
B? He's kind of up buddy. there. He's kind of up there. Yeah. On the defensive player of the year? Future. Future. This has to move you. It's either B or C. It's, it's not an all-timer. I'll say, sure. I'll say B because he really did get up. Yeah. I mean, he is seven feet, but he, he got up. And this isn't his bag either, so it's like it's an exceptional that's true, play. That's true. No. We can go B. This is an out-of-body experience for him, so I'll go B. <laughs> yeah. This is the nicest thing you said about Cat in a year, so yeah. I'll take it. I was expecting this to turn around not, nah, not to go nah, this nah. way. Listen, I'm, if I'm only fair, okay, <laughs> I judge what I see. I give credit where it's due, and I hate where hate needs to be hated. Game recognized, game. <laughs> I respect it. All right. Blake Griffin's dunk on Kendrick Perkins. Which one? Oh, Which one? one? That's a good question. I think this is a, the newest inductee into the S tier. Mm. Oh, this has to be S tier. One, he's high as hell, throwing it down with strength. Two, it's Kendrick Perkins. We don't fuck with Kendrick Perkins in any capacity. S tier. Three, underrated. Look at Russell Westbrook's reaction right after he seen his get a teammate, his teammate get eviscerated. He turns around, touches his <laughs> head like, God damn. Bro. He wants nothing to do he with him. No, he wants no parts, bro. And Russell Westbrook's the time to defend for your teammate, bro. He ain't do shit after that. S tier easy. You know, don't even don't even say any more words. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Oh man! Next up, Anthony Edwards dunk on Yuta Watanabe. I know who we're throwing. I don't want to throw on S tier too lightly, but this is an S tier. Let's see. Let's see what this is about. We talk about people getting demasculated. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Yuta was never the same. Corner. Don't jump. Don't jump. Oh, oh my God! He oh, fell with hey. him. That's S tier. Where he landed on. He's That's S tier. That is. It's a cannonball. Oh my goodness. He sacrificed his body for that. Oh my right goodness. There. I think he. Oh my like, goodness. Bro, he, oh my goodness. <laughs> that's a literal T. Oh my goodness. Bro, he no, that's crazy. literal pain that's on That's crazy. Ant risked his career for that dunk, man. He wanted it bad. I like yeah, that. Year. Look at Yuta. It's defenseless, bro. I like Anthony Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. S tier. S tier, easy. I love I'm that. a fan. <laughs> next one. <laughs> yeah, next one. Zion Williamson's poster on Chemezi Metu. I don't think anybody dunking on Chemezi Metu is that worthy of praise. I'm going to go see. Ooh, he's seen C. Is, is that fresh out the memory? I need visuals. It's just a Chemezi Metu. I need yeah. visuals. Let's watch this. Sorry, guys. Make sure you guys are Googling these as we're showing them. Facts. Watch along with us for the long form okay. Post entry. Oh, got him. Damn. Honestly, I might go D. I don't think that's much of a poster. I think it's just a typical Zion dunk. I think if Chemezi Metu didn't have. Feet of concrete, like it would have been okay. It's not yeah. that wasn't great. I think, and maybe I, it's the standard that maybe it's the standard that Zion has set for himself. Yeah, but that was just kind of. I it. think the jab step is what offset the shit out of Chimezi, like you yeah. said. Yeah, it's a good and basketball so he had no play. chance. He had it's no good chance, and it wasn't like a straight up run dunk. Nice bag Zion, but it wasn't disrespectful in any way. He got yeah. to his Carmelo Anthony bag. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, last one: Kawhi Leonard dunk on Jakob Poro. Portal shit. Let's Puddle. see. Jake Puddle. Jake Puddle getting embarrassed. Oh my goodness, we gotta sit through these ads. <laughs> Thank God they're not back to back ads though. We gotta buy YouTube Premium. We really do. Too cheap for that, bro. We need Get me out the hood. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I don't have these black jerseys. Not a fan. Yuck. Okay. Okay. Ooh. He, he put his whole back. knee into yeah. that man's stomach, bro. That's low key an offensive foul. That was a foul. grown man dunk. That's low key an offensive foul. <laughs> <laughs> not really. That you literally <laughs> stuck your knee out. Like, that's Listen, a foul. A lot of guys fall down when they get dunked on. Jakob fell back. He got just moved in air. Like, that's pretty cool. Kawhi Leonard is one of the strongest dudes in the That's not disrespectful, NBA, though. I don't know. He knocked the wind out of him. Knee in the stomach. Kawhi's not that disrespectful. That's a so foul. At <laughs> <laughs> that's a foul. That's against the rules. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to see? He shouldn't be allowed to do this. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if Jakob just get up there, but he can't. He's going the other I way. Mean, a fucking hall monitor over here. All right, which, where do you guys rank this? D. Like, D. I'm fine with D. It's, I actually know if Zion's a D, this got to be a C. Yeah, this is a little better. This than is Zion. not Zion tier. This can be C. He he quite literally moved his entire body. <laughs> wow, yeah. I can't believe you put Cat B. That's so crazy. That's the last one. Oh, I, I see yeah. you have Aaron Baines. I told you, Joel Embiid. Oh yeah, last one. Aaron, last one. Joel Embiid dunking on Aaron Baines. This is this nice. is an NBA playoff. This is nice. Game. This is so nice. this is like yeah upper on the biggest echelon. stage. Biggest stage. Oh my God, Ben Simmons. He knows how to dribble and run down the court still. Oh, don't. Yeah, this is another one that if he inflicted physical pain I mean, at the expense of his own body. According to y'all, though, back hit the ground. This has to be A, right? Yeah, A. Okay. Easy. All right. Yep. Uh, listen, if nothing, we are consistent here at the deep three. So, okay. <laughs> I'm with it. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and none of his teammates ran to his help immediately. No. 
Look at who is that? Who is that? Is that Semi, Semi Ojale? Ojale? Yeah, Semi? Yeah, I was like, 27? That's crazy. We all just thought yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> so who is this? Semi Ojale, bro. <laughs> 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 Say it. No. <laughs> okay. Uh-uh. Damn, that's yeah. a good tier list. This is our fastest tier list we've ever done. <laughs> Damn, yeah, I don't know if we can make this a clip. Shit. That was yeah. quick. Alright. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh man. That was a great TikTok. <laughs> Who is t- <laughs> there is no debate. We're just like, yep, ours. <laughs> All right. Next thing we're gonna do. We're going to do something we've been doing for a while. Okay. Old versus new, but this time small forward edition. Let's That's get back good. in our NBA debate bag. Let's get into after it. We had a little fun. That's funny. So, Let's get which into NBA it. small forward is better, old or new? I'm ready to argue. <laughs> so first off, Kawhi Leonard versus Scottie Pippen. Kawhi. Cool. Ka- Ka- Kawhi. When it comes to being given the forefront the franchise of my organization, although it hasn't been consistent, Scotty never had that opportunity. Or at least when he didn't get that opportunity, never rose to the occasion. But if like he had that, that opportunity this prime, could he have done that? Probably. I not. mean, he got the opportunity and he didn't. So you know what? <laughs> I'm, I, I guess I'll take Kawhi. <laughs> it pays you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Goes against my morals. <laughs> yeah. You get, after 2019, it's got to be Kawhi. Easy. Just want to start you off with an easy one. See where your temperatures at. See if you're gonna be old heads today. Clearly not. <laughs> Paul George versus Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. We're Damn, being old heads today. <laughs> We're being old heads today. It's uh, Dominique Wilkins. I hate this one, bro. You're I blinded by a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great podcast. What do you want from me? The Fantastic. podcast and the bag, bro. God. I guess it's Dominique. It literally has to be Dominique. Listen, he's your favorite 17-year-old's favorite player. That's all I'm saying. They don't know anything. <laughs> they don't the know slashing, anything. The slashing, the efficiency, quite literally having the worst injury that any athlete could imagine other than snapping your leg and being right back. <laughs> being Which right Paul back. George had? Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> That's all I'm like, other than snapping your leg. <laughs> Man, yeah. He really did snap his leg, I mean, bro. Paul George is a better defender, better shooter, maybe a better passer. Which Dominic, is all things... Maybe <laughs> Dominique's running dunk, man. Don't you ever call him running dunk, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, if Dominique yeah. played today's game and had that spacing with his Fuck, penetration... he'd average 35, bro. He'd be you know who Dominique him. played with? Tree Rollins. <laughs> Look, I only know Tree exactly. Rollins. I only know Tree Rollins because he had a nasty Ruby card in a few, a few 2K my teams ago. Oh my goodness. He was like 89 overall, had like a 94 rebounding. I was eating with Tree Rollins on the blacktop. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. God. <laughs> He's a center that was a really good rebounder in like the 80s. God, man. Shout out to Tree Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Hawks teams were terrible. Next up, the big one Kevin Durant versus Larry Bird. I'm taking Larry, Larry Bird. Yeah. I want to say KD, but like... But we're talking just better, not legacy. Just who's a better player? That's hard. It's not that easy. I'm taking Larry Bird. Oh, man. I'm if we're talking Larry just Bird. better... What's the argument for Larry Bird? I think Larry Bird is a much better playmaker. Um, better, than, yeah. Than, I don't know about... Than Kevin, yeah. than Kevin Durant. For sure. And I think when you average out like their entire career, Larry Bird is a better defender. What I think there was a no, I, I think I think the peak of Kevin Durant defending, which he low key like kind of still is, yeah, it's now. like it's it's better. But there's there's some there's some early years where you I think what? I would take Larry Bird. I'll go Bird because KD's a good defender now, but mm-hmm. he was never a good defender while he was an all time great scorer. Mm-hmm. Young KD when he was averaging thirty in a sleep, or young KD when he was averaging thirty two in a sleep wasn't the defender he is now. Exactly, Bird had his peak offensively and defensively at the same time. Exactly. Damn man, that's tough. I kind of want to say KD, but I have to lean. And guess what? Rings. Whatever. (laughs) Yep. That's so nasty. (laughs) I told you, we're getting disgusted on these debates. (laughs) Next up, Paul Pierce versus Jimmy Butler. Give me Jimmy Butler. <laughs> I really want. I'll take, I'll take Jimmy Butler. Paul Pierce does too much talking for a guy who's close. getting bounced out in the first round every every year. That is insanely close. We gave we gave Paul uh, we gave Paul George credit for having a good podcast. Let's ding Paul Pierce for. I'd <laughs> 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 love to get podcast smoke. <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, Showtime show? KG carries. I'll say that. Absolutely. Oh, hundred percent. Paul Pierce was trying to get that show kicked off of Showtime yeah. the way he was acting. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul George is dominating the media game. Paul Pierce got his first media job, got fired. True. Promptly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Felt like man. he was on ESPN for too long though. <laughs> <laughs> Any amount of time was too long. But yeah, I mean, Jimmy Butler is a better defender. He's a better passer. Uh, Paul Pierce can shoot better. Jimmy Butler can finish better. 
Yeah, man. The second that Jimmy Butler gets put Paul Pierce in has a, a cool nickname though. The truth is hard. Jimmy buckets. He did get stabbed. He, he, he got stabbed uh, yeah. how many times? Nine times? I, Some all. I forgot though. about that. Yeah. I Durability. forgot about that. He got stabbed nine times, played 82 games. Yeah. Listen, he's whack, but he is the NBA 50 cent for that reason. Maybe we got to go Paul Pierce. Nah. 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 nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we got sense. We have sense. Uh, no, we don't give a fuck about Paul Pierce. Next one. Brandon Ingram. I said it all weird. Brandon Ingram versus Brandon Ron Artest. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Where, where are you going? going? Ron. I'm going Meta World Peace. Ron Artest. The panda's friend. <sighs> the panda's friend. The <laughs> panda's even... friend. If it wasn't for a fan throwing a beer on Ron Artest, he would have taken the league over in 2004. Taking the league okay? over. He would have been Ron. <laughs> he would have been the best two-way player we've ever seen. <laughs> this man was so stout defensively. I He's he's better. He would lock up Brandon Ingram. He would lock up Brandon Ingram. Was... Uh, and knock play. him out. I listen. I, and I, <laughs> and and him I, out. I know. I know. I Brandon know. Ingram is about it. He'll throw him. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Brandon Ingram will want to fight. Ron Artest will win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where we're going. So we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go Artest strictly off the hands. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. I won't be the one to tell Artest that anything otherwise. He's not running up on me. I don't want. I don't want him either. Let's Ingram, him. get him. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Carmelo Anthony versus Jason Tatum. You know where I'm going. I'm not. Is, I don't Jason have to Tatum. Tatum. Don't y'all dare. Yeah, Tatum. <laughs> Don't y'all dare. Listen, they can both average 30. They can both be mediocre passers. One's a great defender. One's a bad defender. <laughs> one's made the finals. One hasn't. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about, about Carmelo Anthony. Everything that Jason Tatum tries to do, Carmelo Anthony perfected already. All that, all that back stuff in the mid-range. Besides make the finals. That's that's Carmelo. That's Carmelo. He birthed Jason Tatum. Him and Kobe birthed, birthed Jason, Tatum. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum won more at the age 19 than Carmelo did in his whole career. Because Terry Rozier was out here getting her buckets. That's why. It oh wasn't because Jason Tatum. That's, so, that's, 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 that's what? For what? a second, I thought we were going to be serious. Oh, my like, goodness. Yeah, Danny a. Terry Rozier was out here <laughs> getting buckets. Oh, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Oh. I hate the erasure. I oh. hate the erasure. Oh, I'm completely no, joking. Bro. We can give it the credit to Melo. Really? <laughs> Are you serious? He said, I'm not joking. Yeah, I don't want to leave. I'm not going to be the one to ride for Jason Tatum. If it was like Paul Pierce versus, I mean, if it was like Paul George versus Melo, I might have got spicy, but I'm not going to be out here capping for Jason Tatum. Well, we can walk with Melo. It's cool. <laughs> I'll give Melo the credit because I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> How, what do we got left? We got one video left. We're, we're firing. Man. We're running through these TikToks. We're at two hours and 51 minutes of recording after I edit some stuff out. We're we're nearing three hours. God damn. Longest pod ever. We do this for y'all. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Among other things. (laughs) Last video we're going to do. If you're still here, what should we have people comment? Let's tell them now. (sighs) Comment LeBron's the GOAT. Facts. Comment that. So, next video we're going to do is which NBA player is more fun to watch? (laughs) We're just lying. We're going off of straight (laughs) vibes right now. So, which NBA player is more fun to watch? This this, this is a perfect way to this end the nasty to end the day. Yep. Lamelo Ball versus Anthony Edwards. <sighs> now, when it comes to just strictly more fun to watch, I don't remember the last time I seen a Lamelo Ball highlight. Anthony Edwards, he show uh, his name pops up on podcasts. He don't do podcasts, bro. He be <laughs> rapping on the side. Lamelo Ball don't rap, he, bro. I just saw this man Anthony Edwards talk shit. Tell Jerry Jackson Jr., the defensive player of the year, jump. You the defensive player of the year and proceeds to dunk. And Jerry Jackson was running away. I might have to say Anthony Edwards, bro. He said it all. Yeah. It's Anthony Edwards. Listen, I was hesitant to start last year. Anthony Edwards might be him. I might yeah. have to give it to him. Yeah, yeah bro. The, yeah, bro. And plus, on the defensive end, LaMelo Ball's never going to give me a highlight. He's just gonna I'm not going to act like Edwards is out here locking up either. Oh, people, yeah, for sure. But he's going to be swan shit, though. That's, that's a highlight. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Anthony Edwards' dunk on Yuta Watanabe washes LaMelo's entire highlight career, high school included. Damn. It's not even close. High school included? High school included. The Chino Hill days? That cherry picking does not move No, me. no, 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 no. The- Pointing at half court and then knocking it in? <laughs> that's, crazy. that's crazy. That inspired generations. That's I've crazy. never seen anyone do that also. I stand corrected. <laughs> I do that to this day, bro. But <laughs> I be missing. <laughs> I was about to say, you can't hoop. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Stay tuned. Giannis Antetokounmpo 
versus James Harden. Giannis. I have mm. I really get upset watching James Harden play basketball. <laughs> it's wow. the anti of fun. It's ruined your day. Yeah. He actually yeah. makes your life worse by existing. <laughs> I mean not by <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, who's more but fun? I'm, I'm not a fan. Never been I don't a fan. Oh. I don't know. Listen, current day James Harden, I'll give it to Giannis. For sure. Prime James Harden was one of my favorite players of all time. Yeah, you're, you're a seen, nerd for that. that that's awful. That's I ain't a, never seen. Cook. What do you mean? That's such facts. a bad Twitter mindset. Facts. I me loving James Harden is the least nerd thing about me. 2019 <laughs> James Harden was straight bag, straight buckets, just a fun joy to watch. Was that the year he a almost. A fun joy to watch? Bro, he almost tore out Patrick Beverly's knees. He and murdered Wesley Harden, Johnson bro. on the hardwood. You've never heard of Wesley Johnson's name after that. Watching James Harden play in his prime, especially those last three years in Houston, is the same thing as watching somebody commit tax fraud. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. It's a terrible watch. I hated it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. All right, next one. Luka Doncic versus Joel Embiid. Luka. Wait, do I want to say Luka? Jesus, this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. I actually like Joel. They're both just foul merchants like crazy, dude. But when MB do it though, it's harder to watch because he's the biggest dude on the court at all times. Sometimes he actually has to do it for health reasons and stuff like that. But <sighs> y'all burying the lead. Fuck the foul merchant shit. Luca in the playoffs, the best player you've ever seen in your goddamn True. life. Yeah, Joel Embiid in the playoffs. Tree Rollins. <laughs> yeah, Fair give point. me Luca. That is true. All right, I'll give, yeah. give Luca. <laughs> I seen Luca stay down PG and Kawhi in their eyes, bro. <laughs> Joel Embiid, bro, he trembled. He be trembling over who? Marcus Smart? Yeah, get out of here. Al I've Horford? seen Al Horford put the fear of a god in that man's heart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he, made, he made him be his maker on multiple occasions. <laughs> that's facts. <laughs> so much to the point to where they gave that man 30 M's a year just to not be on the opposing team. Facts. Oh, true. That's crazy. That's they true. paid him to not scare their star. <laughs> you know how crazy that is? Damn, bro. Wow, he's really not like that. <laughs> yeah, that's really, so crazy. He's really not like that. Yeah. That's hilarious. All right. Nikola Jokic versus Jason Tatum. It's Jokic. Yeah, I'm glad it's, you answered that so fast. It's Jokic. It's Jokic. He just does absolutely everything. And Tatum, if Tatum was as good as Kobe and he could play like Kobe, then maybe it's an argument. Yep. But he tries to play like Kobe and he's not good. So it's like, yeah. yep. dang, like you kind of suck. If you disagree, yeah. get your head out of your ass. You're watching, <laughs> one of the, you're watching one of the greatest players of all time in his peak. Enjoy it. Stop being salty that he's better than your favorite. It's okay. Yeah, bro. I ain't gonna lie. There's so many versions and duplicates of Jason Tatum. And it's just like a little bit worse. So yeah, give me give me Jokic. Jokic yeah. for sure. You'll never see anybody like Jokic again the rest of your life. Enjoy well less. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Jordan Poole versus Austin Reeves. We're yeah. boots in a Boston Reeves Jordan just because he Poole. plays for the Lakers. What? Yeah, this is Jordan Poole easily. But Jordan Poole when he's bad, even Jordan Poole when he's bad, it's so bad it's like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> so I'll give Greatest Jordan Poole. lowlights of all time. Yeah, I'll give Jordan Poole the nod. <laughs> Listen, he's anything but boring. I'll say that. Facts, exactly. Yeah, that. just more fun. I could watch the train wreck that, that yeah. Jordan Poole sometimes. Yeah. Facts. The Listen. half court shooting, the carries that be so beautiful, bro. I'm talking about that. He Give looking at women on the sidelines. What? Give me Jordan. Listen, this year in the Wizards, he's either going to average 27, make an all-star leap, or he's going to average 19 on the worst efficiency you've ever seen in your fucking life, which will be a joy to watch as a hater. <laughs> your legacy is on the line, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Steph Curry versus John ja Morant. It's Steph Curry. <laughs> Easily, it's just, I mean, I probably yeah. easily. I don't know about easily. Easily, easily. I don't know. I I can see everything that John Morant does in a two minute span on House of Highlights, and I can just scroll. Steph Curry, I watched the entire game, and the whole thing is fun. You're cooking. Steph Curry's the answer. So John Morant's the answer if He's you're so 14 close. and you like ooh big dunk. Steph Curry's the answer if you're an adult <laughs> big and dunk. you actually like things about the yeah, sport. Big dunk and gritty. <laughs> yeah, <I guess>. yeah. <laughs> Steph Curry's the answer if you can appreciate the intricacies of the game yeah. and all whatever nerd shit. If you're a nerd, you'll love Steph Curry. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It, it is for sure Steph Curry. It is for sure Steph Curry. <laughs> big dunk and gritty. <laughs> big dunk and gritty. <laughs> the John Rad experience. Uh, beautiful. Draymond Green. <laughs> Versus Rudy this is goes, so nasty. Draymond versus Rudy. Versus Rudy. See, <laughs> it's I, it's Draymond. It's easily Draymond. Yeah, Draymond. Because he's gonna be Draymond. talking the entire game, and when Rudy talks, everything he does is just annoying. Your name is Rudy, bro. 
Uh, Rude D, yeah, bro. bro just, Who says it like yeah. that? It's <laughs> slay. I don't know. That's but why. It's Rudy. Rudy. You made two syllables. <laughs> yeah. Rudy. You, added, you, you hate this man so much, you added an extra syllable to his yeah, name. Yeah, bro. Just to hate. <laughs> Listen, nah, Draymond. When you're watching Draymond Green, it's like watching a hockey game. You're just hoping a fight happens and you find enjoyment and anticipation. I, nothing interesting is going to happen watching That's Rudy Gobert. Rudy there's, there's no upside. Facts. <laughs> the upside is... 16 points, 11 rebounds. 16? Upside, I said. Career high. <laughs> yeah, career. You're not scoring that. Uh, <laughs> Next one. Damian Lillard versus Devin Booker. Damian Lillard. I think it's Dame. Yeah. I think, that, when, I think when Dame gets going and he starts pulling from beyond half court, that's that stuff we just like. I Nobody else can do this. Yeah. Outside of Steph. Half counterpoint. Court. See those first two games against the Nuggets when Damian Lillard just like went 16 straight shots missing maybe one or two? You mean the book, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. Damn it. Fuck. Okay. I soiled it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, for sure. But no. There's I've never seen anything like bubble Damian Lillard. That was like an enigma, one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Him dropping exactly. 60, going yeah. back and forth with the entire team, going to double overtime. And multiple walk off game winning shots. Insane, bro. Yeah. And Dave and Devin Booker's career high is the fake of 70 of all time. So who's to say? Ooh. Wow, fake 70? It was the fakest 70 ever. What are you kidding me? Know, <laughs> Stat padding to 70. <laughs> I love I love Devin Booker though, but that 70 was hilarious. Yeah, for sure. Last one. Paul George versus Trey Young. Ah man, this is tough because Paul George is forever. <sighs> They're both podcasters. Take this that how you tough. will. Yeah, but Trey Young's podcast is so cheeks. <laughs> it's so bad. Is he still doing the podcast? Yeah, he already- had Gilbert Arenas on it, which is good, but like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Damn, this I'm is glad tough. you're out here hustling, Trey. Yeah. Listen, man, tough. you want to talk about handles, bag, pure enjoyment? It's, it's kind of the two oh. of the best of their positions, damn near. Yeah. Paul George is damn near pioneer. He's not a pioneer. He's not a pioneer. But man, when he begins into his bag, it just he it hits takes you the, to a zone. He hits the side of the backboard like nobody else. <laughs> that is true. Listen, man, Paul that George hit a 360 dunk in game last year. What are we talking about? But what I was I watching? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's Paul George. I'd say Trey Young. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The passes that Trey Young be throwing are he's easily the uh, now most underrated player in the NBA. The passes that he be throwing, the deep threes, the shit talking. Oh, man. Exactly. <laughs> but I still take him. Paul George. I, I me Paul George. I hate I hate uh. that I'm saying it, Paul. <laughs> wow, so we've done it. We did it. This, episode this 50. is episode fifty. If you guys want to see this type of stuff more often, they got to go to go ahead and continue to what? Like the video across every platform. Subscribe. Do it. Yep. Yeah, Buy check out the merch. merch. Shout out to Nikhil reminding us. Check out the merch in the bio. More to come. Some limited drops soon. But right now you see the evergreen stuff, the standard TD3 logo stuff. It's there. And if you're still here, comment who you think would win a TD3 game of horse. Who do you think is the best hooper here? Who got the, who got the deepest bag? Let's see. <laughs> maybe you'll find out. Maybe not. Maybe I, mean, I don't. I'm gonna say it's me. Maybe I don't promise things. <laughs> I'll, I'll step up. It's me. I'll say it's not me. I'll be. <laughs> I'll be the bearer uh, of bad news to all the people that would pick me. Don't. <laughs> we love you, bro. Shout out to y'all. Man, yeah, man. Episode fifty. We're Success. Here. Success. Our first in-person episode. Let us know how you feel about in person compared to Zoom. Yeah. Obviously, I love the Zoom stuff, but in person is interesting. For sure. Y'all talk too damn much. <laughs> <laughs> but what, mute? Yeah, facts. Yeah, man. Beautiful. We're out of here. Deuces. See ya.